Well, <laughs> well, hmm. Is there? Did anything happen today by chance? I mean, I know it's our normal <sighs> Friday. I don't know. Uh, where we do Xbox Two, but something something about today feels a tad bit different. Not only, you know, is it your birthday, Jez? Uh, happy birthday, happy to birthday to me. To you, I mean, you couldn't have asked for a better birthday present because there's something in the air. <laughs> so, I don't know. There's some uh, wh- there's some news that might have dropped today. You, really? It's some yeah, some news. Some some news that's ha- that's had you had you working all day, right? Uh, uh, yeah, there's, there's uh, been some news. There's been some news. It's almost like it's a little, little bit of news, maybe. Yeah. Some people in chat are, are, are alluding to said news. Mm. Some a, a major industry changing news. But um, what did happen today? Well, <laughs> rant. Hmm. Well, after twenty months, twenty two months, regu- or whatever 20, it is. Yeah, a, a lot of months. Of regulatory wrangling. Mm. It seems that, as I predicted... Oh, you're going to take credit for this now? Xbox is acquired. Activision Blizzard King. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not going to let you... I'm not going to let you just slowly what? say, like, as what? I predicted. Because you were the I main all, voice no, of no, no, negative, no, 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 negative no, no. criticism. Not criticism. I was negative juju no, about the deal. No, no, You're no, the no, reason no. the CMA blocked this bro. in the first place. No, bro. That's, that's fake news, bro. I was always 100% uh-huh. behind the deal happening. I knew it would happen and there wouldn't be any issues. I knew it all along. I was just, I was just reverse jinxing it, bro. I was just rever- <laughs> In fact, you can, all, you can all thank me for my reverse jinkage. Is what got the deal through in the first place. So yeah, mm. the deal is done. It's all thanks to me. And <laughs> people in chat are not happy about this. No, but, uh, really true. yeah, it is. Uh, it, we, we did it. We did it, guys. We did it. We, did it. we <laughs> made it. We made it. We've made it through the oh, other side. I feel like when this started, I was forty, and now I'm fifty. Yeah, it's, uh, dude. It is. It is crazy. I'm sort of like, it's still kind of sinking in. Mm-hmm. It's a big deal for me. It re- it really is a big deal for me personally, as someone who, you know, loves Blizzard, you know, primarily. And I often think about how like World of Warcraft and Blizzard's other games have impacted my life over the years. And last was it on Xbox Two Ultimate, I think, or was it last week? We were talking about. Someone asked, um, I think it was on Ultimate, wasn't it? Could have been. Someone asked about when, when we were taught, when, when we'd ever had an interaction with a celebrity. And um, I brought, I mentioned a story about when my, my band played at BlizzCon yeah. 1. Uh huh. And then, and then, um, and John Davis from Corn said my band was meh. Meh. <laughs> in my, meh. In he'd, my say the same, he'd say the same thing yeah. about our podcast if he ever listened to it, probably, too. <laughs> what do you probably. think of the Xbox 2, Jonathan? Meh. Meh. I'm uh, actually a PlayStation fan. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, it was just kind of, it was just kind of awesome because after we talked about that, someone on Twitter actually found footage of my band that blizzcon won on daily motion mm-hmm. and i i i actually asked blizzard if they had the footage of blizzcon one and they said no we don't have that footage anymore and i thought that footage had been lost forever and it's still there and it just kind of made me realize how like from warcraft 2 and starcraft to world of warcraft to overwatch to diablo i like i've always sort of played blizzard games and now and then my job is about xbox primarily and now my job has sort of converged with my passion for blizzard it's it's surreal man it is surreal and i'm just one person you know there's like blizzard has millions of fans call of duty has millions of fans blizzard has thousands of employees this is going to be they're going to be you know excited but also apprehensive about what the deal means this is such a huge game-changing deal, and mm-hmm. we're going to get into it in the show, bro. Today. It is, indus- Well, you know, there, there, there are a lot of people. Well, not a lot, but I mean, there are some people that are like, "This is the death of the industry. 
It's here! <laughs> How can they allow this monopolistic Xbox to control oh, no. the industry? You know, the same the same people oh, that man. were saying like a week ago that Xbox sucks and has no games and is going to go out of business in three years, right? Being like, yeah, Xbox. They're like rubbing their hands together like Xbox is going to be out of business and Sony can keep on raising prices and we're okay with that, right? And today they're like, no, this can't be... My um, worst nightmare has come true. Xbox owns yeah. everything. It's like how do you how do you like kind of balance the two of one saying that Xbox is going out of business, and then the other one being and saying that they have no games and that they suck and all this sort of stuff, all this sort of rhetoric that is constantly spewed online to crying uh, that oh my god it's a monopoly. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I, it, I, I don't know, wild, man. It's well, and I saw I saw Jeff Grubb tweeting out like, "Don't worry, that everything's going to be okay," you know, uh, clearly responding to people on his timeline. And of I was course. like, "Man, I, I was just I was just thinking, man, this the, my my timeline looks very different to his right now because because <laughs> Xbox fans are celebrating because oh, yeah. what this means is this means that Xbox is going to be okay. Yeah. This means that Xbox's future is pretty much secured now. Xbox's future is guaranteed." Mm. You know, and Xbox can grow now and it doesn't have to struggle and it it's caught up with nostalgia and, and all this kind of stuff because, you know, PlayStation and Xbox have a leg uh, and Nintendo have a legacy that Xbox just couldn't couldn't match. And now with Activision, they've got a chance to pull some of that back. And it's not a silver bullet, you know, and Xbox still there's still a lot of criticisms that Xbox deserves, right? And you know, I think people are a right to be at least nervous and maybe cautious. I wrote an editorial today where, like, we need to keep an eye on Microsoft and hold them to account because they have inherited a legacy spanning decades. You know, they've inherited they've inherited a fan base. You know, some of the most passionate fan bases in the world, and you know, we don't want to see we don't want to see them screw up, and we don't want to see that being squandered and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. there is room for some nerves, but. Some of the extreme takes on the extreme end, which you're mm, talking about, like funny. that the industry's doomed, yeah, industry's, and that yeah. PlayStation, Xbox, and Monopoly, even though they're still, they're, even after this deal, they'll still be smaller than PlayStation in terms of revenue. Uh, yeah, some of the takes are really hysterical, but we're going to talk all about that. Yeah. And well, you know, we I think this is today, the up. longest time we've gone without any intros. So for those of you who may be listening for the first time, hi, what's going on? This is uh. The Xbox Two Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Randall Thor Nineteen, the man with the million, and with me is Jez Cord, managing editor of Windows Central. Thank you for being here with us. Windows if guys, Central. If you guys could do us a huge favor, make sure you guys uh, hit that like button. Just reach down, smack it a little. I mean, it's a big, sh- it's a big day, huge day for Xbox fans, the gaming industry. Uh, show us some love. Hit the uh, hit the like button and uh, make sure to tell everybody that we are indeed now live um share this out and subscribe if you know you haven't already you know it doesn't cost you anything it's free just hit 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 the little button uh we we greatly appreciate it so um we do before we get into everything we do got to mention the wonderful people at patreon.com right jez patreon.com yep, indeed you do slash xb2 uh for those of you who don't know we just this past week on tuesday did an Xbox Two Plus One with John Linneman of Digital Foundry, which was yes, interesting indeed. because Jez on Sunday was like, "Oh, by the way, uh, we're doing Xbox Two Plus One with John from Digital Foundry uh, in two days." And I'm like, <laughs> "I was like, what? Out of nowhere?" I was like, "Okay, that's 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 awesome." I, I thought the conversation with John was great. So yeah, it's really cool. John, John is a cool dude, man. He's yeah. a cool dude. You can join. You can join the Patreon right now. Get early access to it. Uh, the seven fifty tier. Uh, but it will be available to everybody next week. And also, uh, since last month was uh, not a good one for Patreon content because Jez was on vacation for two weeks because everything literally happens when Jez is on vacation, except for ABK closing, because that was a birthday present. <laughs> um, we are having another Xbox 2 Plus 1 on Tuesday with Mr. Maddie Plays. Uh, we are know, indeed. Same YouTube channel, host of Defining Duke. Uh, we got a lot to talk about with Maddie 
from the ABK stuff to Bethesda and Xbox in general. So that should be a pretty damn informative and entertaining show. So uh, yeah, that look for that uh, this upcoming week on Tuesday. Um, but we do have some shout outs uh, for the people in the shout out tier. So I'll do that quickly. We got Peter B. Uh, Mo Spankins, Saucy Mods, James Wiseau, Tricks Are for Trade, The Grants, The Bip, Chris Parnese, Devkra, Hey Blinken, The Bearded, the bearded Tates, Sleets is XZ, Battered Haddock, Army Dude 52C, Mr. Butter Jeans, William Schumacher, Ryan Kipple, Foreign Object, Mythic Marty, Tyler, Gunstar 75, Moronic Donkey 99, C Money, Mario Kart Madman on YouTube, Makazilla, Randathor 19, Silas, Eric Gregory, Elijah Vasquez, James Moore, Fantasticals, Halo is the franchise <laughs> player, Katrox, Ricky Fallon, Bright Tundra One, Joseph Campbell, John Riccatella left Unity for PlayStation. Ouch. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? Uh, Mr. Joanna Dark, Justin Duell, Frank Mariano, PB Roking, Justin Miller, Asa T, and Madison, Untidy Tim, Grizzly Mofo OG, Governor Grimm, DZ Huffin, Justin Sago, Andrew Courtney, Wagerman, Achievement, The Scarecrow 121, Darren Tropy, Prof JJJ, Butterball 8, Ghostface Killer, Wolfgang KPZ, and Ralph Wiggum. Uh, thank you guys so much for supporting what we do on Patreon. We do have a sponsor for the show. The, everything mm-hmm. is in the description, but we'll do the ad read a little bit later because they're friends of the show. And, you know, we'll do it when there's, uh, you know, a lot of people watching. So, yeah. Indeed. Thank you, guys. And uh, look forward to the Mr. It Maddie is on Tuesday. It is Valari and their wonderful gaming pillows, which I've been using. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So, hmm. <laughs> what do you want to talk about? <laughs> I mean, what do you want to talk what about? Do, what do you want to talk about? I mean, I want to talk about Pokemon for two hours. Oh man! I mean, yeah. you can run the show yourself if that's the case, because I'll think I'll go away. <laughs> um, all right, where, 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 oh, do we, where do we even begin here? Where do we even? Where do we, we even begin? So, like, how did this all go down? I was sort of like, my my sleep cycle is really messed up right now. I got mm-hmm. up at nine p.m. yesterday. Um, that that was my morning. It was nine p.m. I had breakfast at nine thirty, and I was like, "Okay, well, the deal's going to go through at any time now." And uh, as our old pal, our good buddy, um, uh, Foss Patents on Twitter, mm-hmm. who's been very aggressively reporting on the ABK deal from the beginning, and I believe Foss Patents is even writing a book about the ABK deal. Mm. which is amazing um he's he was he tweeted at some point that usually the cma puts out their decisions and press releases around six in the morning uh uk time so i was like well you know i was trying to get sleepy about six in the morning at the moment so i was like well okay well i'll stay up and see and and see if it see if it does come through and whether they whether even though they issued a provisional a- approval Maybe they'll maybe they'll do a double bluff and then cancel the deal the last minute, you know. So I was like, okay, I'll stay up. Lo and behold, Foss Patents was completely right. The deal closed, uh, right? Pretty much. Well, my ex, the 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 UK CMA approved the deal right in the morning. Tom Warren last week reported Dude, that Microsoft's going in for Friday. Has been right about yes. so much. Let's gotta give yes, gotta give has. Tom Warren his props here. Okay. Yeah, Tom Warren absolutely nailed the date. Tom Warren reported last week that Microsoft's going in Who's for Friday to close the deal. Who's his source? Because he's know. gotta have a really good source, right? Like yeah, he's, so he's got it. That's, last that's week he was like, it's gonna close on Friday, October thirteenth, and people are like, really? Uh, and it actually, he has. An amazing source somewhere within Microsoft. If I would guess, I don't know. I don't know where, but like he's got somebody who's, who's feeding him information <laughs> that was like right. You would think maybe yeah. it was Phil Spencer himself or something or Satya. Yeah, the way everything's been correct, but yeah, Tom Warren. Uh, uh, I don't know about Satya. Yeah, well, but anyway, Satya. yeah. Tom, Tom was, Tom was right. He was, he was, he was completely on the money, and uh, Tom deserves all the props. Tom's done an amazing job reporting on the the ABK deal as well. I, I joke because I'll be like, I'll be like getting into bed at two in the morning, and Tom's there still writing and stuff. Mm. The, the dude is a machine. He's an absolute machine. Um, so shout out to Tom Warren there. But yeah, the deal. You, UK approved the deal, and then as expected, a few hours later, Microsoft was just like, screw it close that shit yeah. close the deal they dropped two activision dropped a trailer xbox dropped a trailer 
Uh, there was uh, internal memos released, emails to employees from Phil and Bobby Kotick, and that's it. It's done now. There's there's pretty much no more drama. I mean, that the FTC is still trying to kick up a stink in America, but no one cares what they think at this point. It's yes. pretty much done. It's a done deal. The integration is going to start now, and that's it. It's all it's all over with. It's done. Yeah. It's done, baby. It's- but I can't. I, it feels like only yesterday this all started, and no, it, now does, it doesn't feel like only yesterday. I, I will disagree with on that one. This one has <laughs> been a long and arduous journey, right? Because for context, right, um, and we've talked about this before. When Xbox acquired Bethesda, me and Jez knew about it six hours beforehand, right? So yeah. we were kind of like tipped off and it was kind of just waiting. I remember Jez, this is how Jez operates. Jez doesn't trust Twitter with like high level stuff that he sometimes gets, right? And Jez doesn't tell me everything, but sometimes Jez has to share. He has to let somebody know what he knows, right? And, you know, sometimes he'll be like, blah, 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 blah is happening. And I'll be like, all right, cool, right? So this one time, Jez was like, listen, jump into a Discord call. I don't trust Twitter for this. And I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> you want to jump into a Discord call at 2 o'clock in the morning? So I get in there, and Jez tells me that he was just tipped off that Microsoft is acquiring Bethesda, right? And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> like, there's no way <laughs> they're acquiring Bethesda. Well, sure enough, uh, they did. But it was interesting. But, but the reason I bring it up is because... For those six hours, we were sitting there like, "Oh my God, things are gonna change. This is this is Bethesda. This is Bethesda, right? This is the makers mm-hmm. of Fallout and Doom and you know the upcoming Starfield. Like, this is gonna change the industry. Like Xbox and their studios. Now you had Bethesda on top of it. Oh my God, right? And it was like that building anticipation, waiting for the 8 a.m. drop, and then it happened, and it was just like, oh my God, people were like." It was, and it was the day before Series X pre-orders. I remember how excited the Xbox community was that day, right? I still remember it. But with the ABK stuff, it came out of nowhere. You know, even Special Nick, literally like two weeks before, was Xbox will never buy ABK, right? Uh, <laughs> even though he'll say now that like he knew about it and that's why he tweeted it out or whatever. Like always changing the narrative, that guy over at Xbox era. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, like wow, so, like, he nicked that. <laughs> oh, Nick. Um, and it was just like, a, a, you're talking about the biggest third-party publisher in video games with like the biggest console franchise since 2007 and a premier PC studio and in Blizzard with historic, legendary franchises and mobile presence that Xbox and Microsoft sorely lacked. And... Nobody knew about it, and it just dropped. And I remember, like, Cognito calling me at, like, 6 a.m. or whatever it was, being like, bro, what are you doing? Get up. Cody Eastwood calling me, and I'm, like, waking up groggy. I'm like, what's going on? He's like, they just bought ABK. And I'm, like, listening to him, I'm like, I don't, what? ABK? Activision Blizzard? Xbox just, you know, because we had, like, oh, what about Warner Brothers? What about Sega, right? Which More we, teams, yeah. Yeah, and it's like, no, it's Activision. Something that, like, not many people outside of Lord Sovereign of ILP had predicted, right? So I'm like, no, this can't be true. So I like, as I put like cog on speakerphone, I'm like scrolling Twitter and I see Phil's tweet and I see all that stuff. I'm like, oh, and you thought Bethesda was huge and could change the industry? Like this is the defining, this is industry changing. You, like Microsoft to take over the biggest third party publisher in the biz. Like my, like, I'm thinking of like all the ramifications of this. I was just like, this is absolutely crazy. And at the time, we were like, oh, this will go through no problem. Oh, no problem whatsoever. Xbox is, no so problem. Far, Xbox is so far behind PlayStation and Nintendo when it comes to console sales. Uh, it'll pass all the regulators. Who cares about cloud gaming? It's not even really a thing. This shit will be done by the end of the year and all that sort of stuff, right? And then... Like it there was kind of it. it was kind of silence for a bit, if you recall, right? Mm. And yeah. then it got messy. 
then it got real messy between PlayStation and Xbox. Phil Spencer and I mean, Jim that, Ryan, right? All joking aside, that was my official prediction that it would go through, but it would be horribly messy. Was and it your official prediction? Yeah. I don't there, think there, so. Yeah, it was, bro. I don't, I don't, no, no, I don't think, think so. Check, bro. I think you should. I think people should check. I don't. I really don't think. Fact check. The only people that sort of felt it was there was going to be some hangups were I think Tom Warren said from the beginning that he thought there was going to be some hangups, and I remember Jason Schreier saying that there might be oh, some, no, 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 some no, no, issues. No. Uh, to be fair, that was that was at, that was not at the start. I wasn't predicting that. Oh. At the start, I was like, "Yeah, it's going to go through easily." But then when the the UK started fucking around, and then it became uncertain. Yeah, but I was like, okay, but well, they this didn't is start gonna screwing get around now. till later, right? Because we first, because the first regulator to approve it was Brazil, and they approved it unconditionally, and it, they were even saying like, "We're not out here to protect competitors." And we were all like, "Yeah, this is exactly how it's going to go." And I remember I even made a video like, "PlayStation destroys." Or you know, like Brazil destroys PlayStation talking points or whatever it was, right? Because at that point in time, the beef between Phil and Jim and Xbox and PlayStation started to really ramp up. Yeah, it right. Did. And it, like they were taking shots at each other, uh, and it was kind of it was it was interesting because you normally don't see this from these companies. And yeah. you know, we started to hear like PlayStation's arguments and the Brazil stuff about how they can survive without COD and, you know, their business would die and all this sort of ridiculous nonsense. And then Microsoft on the flip would be like, we don't know how to make good games. And <laughs> we're, we're in such last place. You, you should let us have it, right? All these sort of things. <laughs> this place. Right, I mean, that's that was essentially what they were saying. Like, oh, PlayStation has eight to one timed exclusives. They got 300 exclusives to our 50 or whatever it was. Uh, trying to put themselves in the best position, the regulators, to be like, we need this, while PlayStation's like, please don't. Uh, we don't want this future where Microsoft owns, you know, Call of Duty and Blizzard and all this stuff and maybe potentially grows Game Pass to the point where subscriptions are uh, the dominant way people interact with video games, which would impact our business of selling $70 games to our customers because they might expect something different like all that sort of stuff was kind of bundled all in there together and then mm -hmm. yeah the cma april april of this past year when everything sort of looked dire for xbox like honestly looked like absolute shit right because it was it was a collection of things all at once if everybody remembers it was basically oh by the way redfall the game that you're anticipating uh, that we've shown at 60 frames the whole time. Guess what? It's 30 frames. <laughs> Guess what? It's 30 <laughs> frames. And I was like, oh, okay, that's not good. And then all of a sudden, after that, it was... Uh... <laughs> what was after that? It was... it was the Yeah. They, they blocked the ABK deal. Uh, the CMA. When everybody thought... Everybody. Well, not, uh, not everybody, but most people. I would say like 90% of the people thought... Oh, the approval's coming, baby. The CMA approval's coming. We are going to close this stuff. People were so excited. Yeah, ABK's coming home, right? And then people woke up, and it was CMA blocked it. And you were, like, stunned because you didn't think this could possibly happen. And they didn't – because remember, the CMA had uh, – the month prior, or maybe it was two months prior – basically had said that they had thrown out the console theory of harm because their math yeah. was wrong. So there wasn't going to be any issue with Sony. So everybody thought it was in the clear. We thought it was done and over with. Because certainly, if the console theory of harm is gone, well, they're not going to do anything about cloud gaming. It barely even exists. Oh, but we were rope-a-doped. We were rope-a-doped, people. Because they blocked that shit. They blocked that shit on, on cloud gaming. And we were like, the fuck? <laughs> we were all just like, what? <laughs> what? And it, it, dude, I remember because Xbox fans, they felt like it was, it was all falling apart. Like Redfall was looking like a disaster. Well, we didn't know how big of a problem it was going to be, but it was like, what the hell's going on? The ABK deal that Xbox had spent a whole year on, maybe even to the detriment of some of their deals, other things. Uh, that we have even talked about in previous podcasts, like, oh, it seems like Xbox is just in a holding pattern 
Like they're not doing anything. They're just everybody's so focused on ABK, like their leadership team. They're not. They're not looking towards other stuff. And if the deal doesn't go through, it's going to be really bad, right? And there was that stretch where it was like, oh my god, nothing. Like this. This is this is awful. And then I think it was it was that it was that shining light in the darkness, Jez. You know what, what they say? What's the what's the quote from from the Dark Knight? The dawn, the the uh, oh god, I forgot. I um, I don't know. You got it. You you got you 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 the Batman guy. I know, but I'm trying to remember the the dawn the is, is or the, before yeah the, the dawn. night is this dark just before the dawn, and who is dark who, just before the dawn? Who, who, well, it's not Batman who says it. it it's uh it's Two Face or it's it's Trigger. You know. Oh. And here comes the European Union with the glimmer of hope. Where's the trigger? <laughs> no, sorry. With the glimmer of hope. <laughs> and they're like, hey, guess what? We we have this deal. And we oh, have... This is, this is like some kind of epic, epic tale you're telling right now. Bro. I mean, because this is an epic tale. The whole ABK history is epic. When you talk about the ups and the downs, the twists and the turns, the betrayals... And it's you know, right. I'm saying like it's 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 someone Dude, should is, write a book about it. This is literally Game of Thrones. I mean, because you think about it, like I said, everybody was so down. Everybody's this shit's getting blocked. And then the hero in the night, the hero we deserve, but not the one we needed, or the one we Word needed, but not me. the one we deserved. <laughs> and the European Union is like, no, we approved the deal <laughs> with some concessions uh, for for cloud gaming because we also are concerned about that too. And it was like, everybody gets a license, and blah, 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 blah. And everyone's like, oh, because we knew the FTC was fighting this stuff because they're perennial losers, right? We knew Lena Khan and the FTC was going to be <laughs> like, we're deal, taking this, uh... yeah, we're going to take this shit to court and we are going to, uh, we are going to embarrass ourselves in the government. We are going to waste all these taxpayers' money and we are going to lose in spectacular fashion, but we're still going to do it because uh, big tech bad, right? Big tech bad. Big tech bad. And it was like, okay, well, the Microsoft can't fight the FTC, and they can't fight the CMA who blocked it. And the FTC and the CMA seemed like they were working together. There was like 26 meetings or calls between them. And, like, we needed a hero, and we got one, and it was the European Commission. <laughs> and so then are you saying the European Commission's the Dark Knight? Well, because if they would have blocked it, it would have been over. If all three of regulators had blocked it, it would have been done. But they gave you have people... to do an impression of the European Commission as the, of the Dark Knight now. I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can do that. But the FTC is and that stupid. changed everything. And then for whatever reason, Microsoft bluffed the FTC because suddenly the FTC thought Microsoft was going to close over the CMA. Which apparently they had no intentions of ever doing, but somehow was able to convince the lawyers at the FTC that the closing of the ABK, ABK deal was imminent. And so they filed an injunction so they could have that trial. And Xbox, which they lost, which they lost, like, of course they are, because they're a bunch of losers who only know how to lose, right? They lost in spectacular fashion. Which then sort of prompted the CMA to be like, oh no, because the ex- cause they had appealed and cat was happening and it was like, uh oh, well, maybe we need to like rethink all this and everything kind of twisted and turned and the CMA was like, all right, we, we're going to accept this new proposal by Xbox or Ubisoft having the streaming rights and then finally we're here. It's all over and done with. The CMA has approved the deal. Uh, by Xbox selling the streaming rights to Activision and the FTC is still out there being like, we'll get you, Xbox! We, we'll have our day in court, even though we already lost them. Like, <laughs> if it wasn't for those meddling kids. They, we'll see you in December because we're going to try to break you up, which is a lot harder than, you know, if they, they hadn't and stuff. It's it's one for the ages. It's it's honestly, when you think about it, like, w- there it's is... The biggest- it's the biggest video game deal in history. It's a big. It's one of the biggest tech deals in history. Is it the biggest tech deal in history? I, uh, I don't know. I don't know what like, was what was the dis- pretty the, damn big. It's pretty damn big. It, it might be uh, seventy billion dollars is a lot. And even even when you look at it, like I know some people will be like Xbox overpaid for ABK, and it's like yeah, probably, absolutely. You know, you don't know mm. what the f- if Call of Duty is going to remain as dominant as it's always been. You don't know how Blizzard's going to perform. I mean. 
you know, recently it was like Overwatch 2, everyone's like, yeah. And then Diablo 4, everyone's like, look at Diablo 4, go, baby. But now everybody's kind of down on Diablo 4. So, yeah, like you don't know if Call of Duty is going to be as popular as it is five years from now. Xbox could have bought like a lame duck, a, a lame horse, essentially. And it could decline. Lame horse? You know, you know what I mean. Like, you, you don't know. So it's like, yeah, but it's they obviously think the value is worth it. Because it's going to provide all this stuff for sectors that they're not oh. in, specifically mobile. And Jazz, you always talked about the idea of how this was really Xbox and Microsoft's chance to break up the duopoly of Google and Apple and yep. like make that store and stuff like that. And then it's it's like Activision does literally everything for Xbox that they could desire. Because we had seen the documents about how they wanted to get like Square Enix. They had wanted to get Sega. And they talked about like the reasons why. And, like, ABK covers it all. It covers it all. It covers console, co- covers Game Pass on console, Game Pass on PC, PC with Blizzard, the mobile stuff. Like, you couldn't have asked for uh, a publisher who covers all the bases that Microsoft was looking for. Like, this is... I know, because personally, it's like... All right, personally, we've talked about this, right? hmm I mean... The only stuff I'm really interested in ABK is the Call of Duty games because I play them every single year for the campaign. I don't even care about the multiplayer because even though Bobby Kotick has taken this company from like nothing into the biggest publisher in the world, during that time frame, they basically threw all their developers who used to make all sorts of different games and put them all on the Call of Duty franchise and bet the company's entire future on it. So, like, we used to have an Activision that used to make Spider-Man games, that used to make games like Singularity, Spyro, Skylanders, Guitar Hero, like, a variety of games that helped them become the number one pub- you know, the number one video- third-party uh, publisher in the industry, and they basically only do COD now. So, it's like, okay, yeah, thanks, I don't have to pay $70 for COD, you know, but I would still like to see other games come out of it. You know, the hope is, you know, for a lot of people, like Prototype Returns or Guitar Hero Returns or Tony Hawk comes back or new IPs well, and things, l- of those, things of that nature, right? They're literally, like in the trailer, the, in the trailer Microsoft published for, um, for, the, for the deal, there, were, there was a section that was like going through all the, the possibilities and it was like more players and it was showing games come to game pass or whatever and then it was like old friends oh and friends. the next scene was spyro the dragon mm. i kind of feel like dude you don't you don't do that to people you don't play with people's feelings like that unless you mean it mm. and xbox has been burnt by this before by us and other other people you know super duper graphics pack comes to mind from minecraft so it's like you don't tease Spyro unless you're actually going to do something with it, and it really does seem like they're going to make good on some of these promises and this potential and all this speculation that some of these games could come back. It really does seem like that's what they're going to be doing. That's what they're going to be going for, and some of the teams that were kind of maybe forced to work on service games in the in the Activision u- shareholder culture universe, that's not going to be the case anymore. Like this, I, you know, Toys for Bob working on a, a, a premium multiplayer game in Crash Team, whatever it's called, Crash Bash, Crash or Team Racing, yeah, I'm not gonna Crash Team yeah, Racing, but yeah, cra- not not Crash Team Racing, that that brawler thing, that doesn't feel like what the fans want. The fans want a new Crash, a new classic Crash, a you know, hardcore 3D platformer. They don't, they don't, no, nobody asked for a, a Crash multiplayer game. You know, that feels like Activision all over. So. Yeah, the the potential is just vast. That StarCraft was in the trailer. Phil talked about StarCraft. You know, you have to expect. I mean, StarCraft even in is even in your article form. just before this all happened, where you yeah. interviewed Bobby in an all hands <laughs> meeting, just because because that's what I read on the internet. Jez Corden interviewed uh, Bobby Kotick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I couldn't believe that man. And he and he talked about reviving Guitar Hero, right? Yeah. And he I, said, "He said, and I, I'm paraphrasing here slightly because I don't have the audio to hand. But he said, he basically said, as a, as a, in a sort of, as a matter of fact kind of way, the the Guitar Hero revival wouldn't be happening without these types of resources, implying that it's already underway. Yeah, like it's know. already been thought of. Which is interesting because I'm trying to think how." How is the Guitar Hero revival even going to work? Because you would need the guitars. So is somebody making the guitars again? 
Is it going to be multi-platform? I mean, granted, like, okay, you could run that stuff on Game Pass, but the licenses for all the songs, like, the last Guitar Hero game I don't think did very well. I, like, there's a lot of things to think through of a Guitar Hero revival, right? Because, I don't know, it's kind yeah, of... Yeah, there's, there's a lot, but he, but that's what he's talking about. Like, we wouldn't have had the resources or the time to put a team together to do this. Was He was kind of hinting at there, you know, because you, you need you need somewhere to, someone to make the hardware. And I believe Ma- was it Mad Cats who made made the guitars before? Um, um, unless I'm going mad, they might have. Uh, they didn't. Yeah, I don't think I don't think Activision made those in house. But Microsoft has manufacturing pipelines to build peripherals, you know, in house. Activision doesn't make controllers, you know. If it did in the past, it sure as hell doesn't now. Um, so you know, there are there are all these kind of things to consider, all these possibilities, and. You know, the fact that all this stuff has been name checked and teased and hinted at, um just they they're gonna do it. This isn't this isn't stuff to placate regulators or anything. This isn't this isn't this isn't like they wouldn't be saying it if they weren't gonna do it. You know, the fact that Spyro is there front and center in old friends, that says to me, we're gonna do something with this IP. We're not we're not just buying Activision for the Call of Duty machine that it is right now. We're buying this to make good use of all this dormant stuff you know it's gonna take time it's gonna take mm-hmm. years but i think we'll get there and it's gonna be exciting yeah and i, I do it i've got to look at some of the super chats as they're coming in oh, some and, of the super chats have been absolutely yeah, incredible and like we have one here three hundred dollars super chat from sea lord of bravos who i recognize who's always in the chat every single week and is a uh, one of the the better members of Reset Era's Xbox uh, thread, which is the only thread worth visiting on that website. So thank you uh, for your incredible support. He says, Consider this is a thank you for all the shows I've listened to since discovering Xbox 2 in the lead-up to the series console release. And a make-up for all the donations I should have made before this one seemed like a particularly great day to do this. Yeah, that's incredible, man. It you is. didn't have to do that. We also have a... A fifty dollar one from Euromalis, someone who's in the chat every single day, every single episode as well, as well as a one of the better members over at Reset Era's Xbox thread, the only thread worth visiting on that website. Um, <laughs> it's a re- it's right that every single I time. say that every single time because it's so because it's so true. It's the only the only thread worth true. visiting if you're an Xbox <laughs> fan. Uh, he says Activision money came through big, so here's Fitty for feelings based jazz massive L. On his birthday, no less. <laughs> you guys do great work. Uh, Keep it up. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Um, we also have another one here from Juan who says, Happy birthday, Jez. Oh, thank you very much. Because it is your birthday. And so, what, is. so how old are you today? It's your birthday. Could you have thought like a better I'm, way to uh, celebrate your birthday? 25. Did, you're 25. 25 years so old. you're not. Yeah, you're, you're 30. You're probably like 37, yeah. right? No, I'm, I'm 25. You, you wish you were 35. 35? wish. 25. 25, bro. 25. Nah, I'm uh, 37 today. 37. So, getting so, on a bit, you know, getting on. So, could you have imagined a better way to celebrate your birthday than doing a podcast with your good old buddy, Randall Thor 19 celebrating the acquisition finally? Not like, oh, uh, one of the regulators approved it, but the actual closing of ABK and finally Blizzard, your favorite game studio. Because a lot of people, look, there's, always, there's been a lot of misrepresent misrepresenting misrepresentation of your <laughs> feelings I'm trying to think of the right word of your feelings <laughs> regarding this deal and like why you wanted it to pass and what it meant to you because you always said like you only cared about blizzard you said you remember you like from the get-go you're like yeah. listen i just want blizzard away from bobby kotick that's my number yeah, one I- goal and priority here but every time you talk about and i remember when you used to go in on the cma when they blocked it originally People like That's came at you because I hate the UK. Government. Well, there's there's that as well, but I mean, like, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of ang- angles and facets to this, you know. Of course, I want Xbox to do well. Of course, I want Xbox to survive, you know. And that's like, for me personally, it's good as an Xbox customer if Xbox is doing well. But then, analytically speaking, it's good if Xbox is doing well because it means the industry is more competitive. You don't want a universe where PlayStation just walks all over everyone. You don't mm. want that universe, man. Even PlayStation gamers, they shouldn't want that universe. It's going to mean higher prices for everyone. It's going to mean that 
Sony doesn't need to try as hard. It'll mean less games and more more money going to shareholders instead of bringing you quality. So PlayStation gamers shouldn't, analytically speaking purely, PlayStation gamers shouldn't want that either. You know, um, no, and you know, on on the flip side, people shouldn't want Xbox to dominate. People shouldn't want Xbox to completely walk all over the whole industry either. You know, so yeah, competition is important. So I, there's that aspect as well, and there's also the Blizzard aspect. And I spoke on this podcast before about how how important Blizzard is to me as someone who's played World of Warcraft for 20 years almost. Blizzard uh, World of Warcraft's entering its 19th year now, but I, I played in the the original US beta. I imported the bloody game so I could play so I could play it early from in America, and then I also played in the beta, and I was you know enamored with that game from day zero because I was a Warcraft fan from the RTS days as well, and. I've played Blizzard. I've played Blizzard games since Blackthorn, you know, back in the nineties, for God's sake. And you know, some of these, some of these were the only kind of games that I could run on my PC at the time. With these sort of two, these old two D games like Blackthorn, Warcraft Two, and stuff like that. So, you know, Blizzard means a lot to me personally, and means a lot to you know millions of people around the world. There's like Blizzard has such a passionate, dedicated fan base. And, you know, and that's why, like, I worry about things like BlizzCon, which doesn't make any money. Like, people say, like, oh, my God, the BlizzCon tickets are so expensive. And it's just like, yeah, but the, the event is not profitable at all. You know, they do it for the fans and, and for the teams and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's not like they're doing it because it makes tons of money. They've, they've been on the record of this multiple times. And that's why I always think, like, God, is BlizzCon something that Xbox might get rid of? You know, is the esport something Microsoft might get rid of? Because I know Microsoft doesn't give a crap about esports, really. No. But like Overwatch League is popular as an esport, um, and uh, Blizzard also has like a bunch of Warcraft esports and invitationals and things like that. And I'm thinking, like, is Xbox going to get rid of all that? So I'm still like, even though like overall I'm excited about the deal, there's still unanswered questions and reasons to be nervous. You know, is Xbox going to get rid of uh, support teams? Because, you know, Microsoft doesn't like su- hiring support staff. You know, and Activision has really great support teams. Way better than Xbox and way better than Microsoft. You know, they'd be stupid so will too. Microsoft lay them off? No, they'd, they'd be stupid too. They'd yeah. be stupid too. But they, they might do it though. They might yeah, do it. You never know. They might, be like, they might be like, oh, ChatGPT can handle this. You know, oh, ChatGPT can. Microsoft because is, Microsoft is really dumb sometimes. Yeah, they are. They so, can be. So I'm sort of like, there are reasons to be nervous sure but people have misrepresented why i wanted this deal to go through you know and misrepresented why a lot of people wanted the deal to go through it's not about xbox it's really not it's about driving competition in the industry it's about cracking open mobile gaming so that it doesn't have to just be pay to win gambling bullshit that survives on these platforms it's about um you know Game Blizzard employees a better deal, and every single Blizzard employee that I've spoken to, and you know I've got Blizzard sources. That's how I. That's how I get. Like I had all the Diablo information. I had all you know. Um, I had this Bobby Kotick meeting. I had all this kind of stuff. You got I, the Odyssey info. Their next game, the survival game. Yeah, the the Odyssey stuff. I, you know, I know I know a lot of people at Blizzard. Like I know tons of people, and a part of that is because a lot of my friends that I played Warcraft with over the years ended up working for blizzard you know? and um because they love it too and oftentimes when they share things with me it's because they're super excited about it they love blizzard as well they love working there and they love the company so i want a better deal for them and you know microsoft has proven itself to be union friendly which you know um could lead to you know better conditions for blizzard and stuff but you know and there's there's been people who've sort of misinterpreted me on Twitter saying the deal's going to get blocked, and I've seen fanboys saying, "Oh, Jez doesn't even want the deal to happen," you know, <laughs> Xbox fanboys, Xbox the toxic Xbox fanboys, like on the the really hard toxic edge. You know, you guys know who I'm talking about. They have like you know misrepresented everything about this deal as well, and for them, it is about just hurting Sony. They don't give a crap about Blizzard games. They don't. They probably don't even play games. For them, it's just a console war thing. You know, so but when you cut through all the the BS and the drama and all this kind of stuff, it should just lead to better things for everyone involved. You know, and like it should mean more, less Call of Duty machine. You know, hopefully higher quality releases from Call of Duty rather than this sort of rushed out 
annualization that we've seen. It should mean that studios <clears throat> like Toys for Bob can flex their creativity rather than make service games. It could mean like, hopefully it will mean, you know, more resources to bring World of Warcraft to other platforms, you know. Um, and it should mean dormant IP getting revived. Like they're teasing Starcraft yeah. and Spyro and Guitar Hero. Well, not only that, Jez. So like you look at the trailer they released because they had a trailer put together and it was a really good one, right? I don't think it's as good as the Bethesda one that they had for when that deal closed, but it was a good one. I don't know if there's things you can take away from it. You mentioned to me that there's Warcraft footage in there that's not in any of the games. And that yeah, people, I mean, are, people are speculating that this is from a new Warcraft game. But not only that, uh, they show Alex Mercer from Prototype um, yes. is in the trailer, which is like, okay, Spyro's in the trailer. Was uh, I think Crash was in the trailer as well. I only Hero watched dude. it once. So it's like, yeah. Sekiro was there too, or somewhere, I think. Who? In the banner or something. Sekiro. Oh, yeah. Sekiro was there. Um, so, so I don't know. The, the Warcraft thing is interesting because I don't know anything about Warcraft. I mean, I've seen the CGI I, trailers. I'm not 100% and stuff, sure just like... about that. Like, I just saw people were speculating on the, on the Twitter page, but it was kind of like um, people on the Warcraft subreddit were like, hang on a sec. What, what, what game is this footage from? And people were like, hang on, I, it's from Warcraft Rumble. It has to be. And they're like, no, 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 it's not Warcraft Rumble's art style. You know, and they were like, it's got to be some Warcraft cinematic. And they're like, no, it isn't. It's not in any War World of Warcraft cinematic. You know, it's a, it's a scene with Grommash Hellscream from Warcraft 3 fighting something. And uh, people don't know what it's from. And it could be, is that, are they teasing a new game? Mikey Barra said that Warcraft has the most news at BlizzCon this year. So like it, you just don't know. Like there's just so much excitement already about what all this stuff. Yeah, there's is. even Tony Hawk is in the trailer here, right? Tony. Uh... No, and, and these people, people in chat are saying it came from the movie. No, it didn't. Like Grum, Grum Hellscream was not in the movie. I don't think. No, of course he wasn't. He wasn't born. So uh, like, there, is, there the is, there is, there is some footage from the movie in the trailer. There's some footage from. Shadowlands in the trailer through all, some of the thrall cinematics, but there's also some very very brief gameplay footage of Grom ha Grom Hellscream from Warcraft Three fighting something, and that isn't in anything else that we've seen. So it's uh, I don't know, man. It's everything's going crazy right now. Everything's going crazy. Starcraft, <laughs> Starcraft, Starcraft. There was no. I tell you what, there wasn't though. There was no Heroes of the Storm. Mm. Not a single. Actually, maybe the Grom footage was from heroes of the storm and that's why nobody recognized it it's probably just but means grom even in heroes of the storm they, don't, they probably don't have any f plans for heroes of the storm right well i'm i'm bitching every day to mike and phil about that yeah i don't care about day. anything else I want, I want heroes of the storm to come to xbox man that game would work on xbox i'm telling you you put master chief in there you put some other characters in there doom guy put doom guy in heroes of the storm that'd be so sick that'd be so sick man Sorry. Carry on. All right. Well, let me let me get through these super chats. There's a lot of them. So thank you guys for being here very, so much. We appreciate all of you. Make sure you hit the like button. Share this out. Uh, subscribe if you're new. Uh, we have Andrew Fox becoming a new member as well as Juan. Thank you guys both. Enjoy the uh, the emotes. We have Sith Lord saying, Happy birthday, Jazz. Rand, please tell us what the ABK studio is making Scalebound. Love you guys. Glad the deal's done. Go Blackhawks. Have a great show. <laughs> Scalebound mentioned. We couldn't. I think we didn't get one last last week. But there's always a scale bomb mention. Uh, I we need we need a we need a soundboard. Yeah, we do. <laughs> soundboard. <laughs> you know what's funny? I, I was thinking mentioned. about like ways to start the show, and I just like Gaz was in, you know because I was talking to Gaz, and all Gaz always does is like he'll he'll play some music, you know, and it'll get hyped up. I was just thinking like, oh man, if like play some music to hype everybody up, but then I was like, oh, but copyright, you know, because sometimes we deal with, uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. sometimes we deal with the trailer, the intro music to the trailer getting copyrighted, uh, even though we own, we have a, we have the rights to use it because we have a license for it, but I hate dealing with copyright stuff. So I was just like, oh, wouldn't it be like cool to like run some, some really like hype song, but it was just like, oh, I don't want to deal with copyright stuff. Uh, just I'll, I'll write a song for it, man. I'll, I'll okay. whip out my guitar. A member for 20 months says, ABK is finally done. Become a channel member during the emergency podcast for the ABK deal. Hands down my favorite podcast. Thank you. That means a lot. Uh, Chaos Mike. Thank you so much. Says, happy birthday, Jez. I hope this is the day you've been dreaming about. Well, it definitely has been. <laughs> 
because it couldn't oh, have gone. God. Yeah, dreams and nightmares, I think. The dreams and nightmares, yeah. Joshua B says, happy birthday, Jazz. Also, toys for Bob Banjo, please. That's been a, 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 a thorough line for a long time. When they, when they first acquired ABK, people were like, you have your developer for Banjo now. Like, because before, yeah. when you talk about some of the franchises that X- Xbox fans have asked Xbox to bring back from the dead. Because Microsoft, even before this ABK deal, was sitting on a bunch of unused IPs, right? And now they're sitting on a whole bunch more. Did you see the tr- tweet from Jeff Keighley where he talked about all the IPs that Xbox owns from the ABK deal? It's wild. Like, it got, ABK is 40 years old. Yeah. You know, where you go back far enough, you're even talking about things like Pitfall. And that was another game this, that so this is, Kotick name-checked Pitfall during the during that event too. This is, So Jeff Keighley had tweeted out, with the completion of the deal to acquire Activision, Blizzard, and King, Xbox seemingly now owns all the following franchises. Ready? This is a long list. Yeah. Crash Let's Bandicoot, the former Sony PlayStation mascot, which is so odd. So they own Crash Bandicoot, Spyro the Dragon, Guitar Hero, Hexen, King's Quest, Space Quest, Quest for Glory, Tenchu, Pitfall, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, Zork, to come back. Call of Duty, Zork. Candy Crush, Starcraft, Warcraft, Diablo, Gabriel Knight, Overwatch, Hearthstone, Phantasmagoria, The Lost Vikings, True Crime, Interstate 76, Skylanders, really Prototype, Blackthorn, and Freddie Parker's Frontier Pharmacist. Say that five times fast, huh? Oh, man. Blackthorn was so sick. I'd love to see Blackthorn come back, man. But I don't know. I don't know how many people play that. Do you play it? Have you ever played Blackthorn? I don't know. Like um, I've never played Blackthorn, no. It's like it's like a Metroidvania kind of-ish, sort of. A protovania? I don't know. But the- it's, a side, it's a side-scrolling shooter platform, a weird thing, man. It was so good. It felt so nice. It was super violent. I think, actually, Blackform was the, the first game I played that had, like, true violence in it. It was mm. pixelated cartoon, but I was just, like, a little kid. I was, like, six or seven, eight years old or something. I was like, oh, my God. This is this is cool, man. Now I want every game to have violence in it. It's Blackform's fault, man. Well, yeah, but my point was, like, Xbox sits on all these IPs. Now they have even more IPs that they're sitting on. One Mm. of the things people have been saying since the day the deal was announced was, hey, Toys for Bob should make Banjo. Because the idea is Xbox doesn't have any studios that want to make Banjo. Rare doesn't want to do Banjo, so they would have to farm it out to somebody. It's the same problem with Killer Instinct. Fans want... Dude, maybe they don't want to make Banjo. I wouldn't well, want no, to make banjo. I, I, no, Would you I, want to make banjo? No, I I wouldn't want to make banjo either. <laughs> but but if you I were to make crash, well, yeah. But if you were also the studio that brought back banjo, that could that could lead to some. Yeah, I don't think Xbox is going to force Toys for Bob to do whatever, right? Oh, like oh, you're now working on banjo. But if there was ever a time, if banjo is already not in development, which it may or may not be, like the problem with like like some of these franchises that xbox fans want xbox to bring back is that they just don't have the developers to make them killer instinct Mm. is another one that it was kind of like yeah they want to do killer instinct but they don't have a fighting game developer because originally it was double helix and then they were acquired by amazon and then eventually dissolved then it was iron galaxy but then they wanted to do their own stuff and it seemed like oh, there's just nobody to do killer instinct you have to make a deal with some of these other developers and it's everybody's busy making their own stuff but then it's all of a sudden, mm. like, Iron Galaxy's back in the fold, you know, doing, like, an update for Killer Instinct, so maybe Killer Instinct 2 can happen. And if so, as you tweeted on Twitter, imagine the guest characters they could put into Killer Instinct that yeah. now Microsoft owns. So a lot of Xbox fans are like, please, Toys for Bob, make us banjos. You know, make us a banjo. You know, because there, there are, like, five banjo bros in the, sh- in, the, in the chat every single week for the show, right? The banjo bros think they're, like, banjo, an army. The- they think they're like they're an the, army of, of millions when it's like an army of a couple, maybe maybe a thousand strong, you know? They, every, every single Banjo fan in existence is in the chat right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> but nah, I, I mean, I what I would think would be cool, right? And I, I think they might have done this with the initiative where it was kind of like, look, this is the IP we've got. Do you want to do something with it, you know? 
and I could see like maybe I could see them suggest, you know, there's a lot of our fans want Banjo to come back. Toys for Bob, you seem ideally placed to explore this. But that could easily just be like, eh, we'd rather have a hundred million dollar budget for Crash Four, Five, or something, you know, um, which you know would be understandable. That's their game. That's their IP. That's their community. But at the same time, I do think there's a lot of overlap there. I do think a lot of Crash fans probably do like Banjo too. A lot of Spyro fans probably like Banjo as well. So there is some overlap, you know, and maybe there is there's more possibility than there ever has been, to be honest, you know. But yeah, it's it's like the the geeky nerd in chat says. Even Rand was like, um, even Rand, even Rare was like, nah, don't want to do banjo anymore, you know. So at the end of the day, it's up to them what they want to make. But like, I do think there's there's some so, so, some realities where Microsoft will be like, look, we need to revive StarCraft, you know, and then they'll build a team for it. And you can bet your ass there's still people out there, you know, developers who worked on StarCraft previously who will probably come back to work on it again. Like Chris Metzen, who created Warcraft, who co-created the Warcraft universe, he is he came back out of retirement to lead Warcraft's creative vision again recently. He came back as a consultant for a while, but now he's accepted a full-time role as a creative director of World of Warcraft after being retired for like a million years. So, you know, there's there's every single possibility. And I think a lot of people just like the idea of working for Microsoft having Microsoft on their resume, working mm. for Phil, and exploring where the, all of this can go. Because now Microsoft has a real opportunity to go way beyond Xbox has ever been. Mm. They have an opportunity to go, you know, and be a mega, a mega game publisher, you know, on the scale of like Tencent and stuff. And just be everywhere that's their goal is to be everywhere you know have the best mobile games have the best console games have the best pc games have the best ecosystem for gaming um the best hardware for gaming the best accessories for gaming the best service for gaming the best subscription service for gaming they want to do all of it and now now that they have the cloud with the ip and the the nostalgia and the legacy and the fans they've really got a chance to do that but we've still got to keep an eye on them man we got to keep an eye on that ball. we got to hold them to account. Yeah. I mean, when you think about this, Xbox fans, you know, I know last gen wasn't the greatest, but it's led to yeah, it what fun. we're at here now, right? It led to Game Pass. It led to a lot of the investments. Like, somehow Phil convinced Satya, of all people, who initially was like, what are we doing in gaming? <laughs> like, what are we doing here? Should we get out of this? You know, because X- the Xbox One gen was rough. Rough for fans, rough for Xbox. Like it was just, it was a, it was a, it was a laughing. It was, it was a joke. People made fun of it all the time. Um, and I remember in 2017, that year specifically, it felt like it was, a, it was, it was coming up to the end, bro. That year it we did. saw the release of like it was dire. Yeah, it was like Halo Wars Two, Forza Motorsport Seven, and like. Um, I want to say the other game was like, uh, what was, what was that platforming game that they had the rights Ooh, to? It was like a squirrel. Fun. It was like a squirrel, but it was, um, I forget. Either uh, way. Bubsy. No, nah, not Bubsy. <laughs> but it, it, it sort of, it sort of felt. <laughs> what the fuck he's talking about, a squirrel? <sighs> somebody in what chat. What are you talking about? Somebody in chat will know. It may, it's, maybe it's not a squirrel. Oh, oh, uh, Lucky. Lucky Tales. Yeah. Super Lucky Tales, super right? Lu- they, they, yeah. they had that. So it was. So like you said, they actually um, they actually gave the rights to Super Lucky's Tale to the dev back to the dev. They yeah. just gave them the rights back. So it's like, yeah, it it sort of felt like this was the end because like the future looked bad. Uh, yeah. you know, uh, Lionhead was shut down. Fable Legends was canceled. Yeah, uh, well. uh, Phantom Dust, CGI trailer ended up being just Phantom Dust OG game remastered. Which nobody really wanted, right? And no, it, it was it was supposed to be a full game. They it was, it. but I'm saying like it, it sort of seemed like the decisions they were making with the Xbox One weren't great, oh. and it, you know then oh. Scalebound was canceled, right? It was like all these sort of things that were just like, what is going on? And we had it was a mess. The, it we was had a shambles. We had five omni shambles. Five studios at that point. Five studios in 2017. Five. Like I'm not like this isn't me exaggerating like i sometimes do we exaggerate for entertainment purposes sometimes but they literally had five studios in 2017 they had the coalition 
They had 343. They had turn 10. They had Mojang. And they had Rare. Those were the five hey, studios. That's six studios. What was the sixth? Microsoft Casual Games team. Yeah, Solitaire, well, that doesn't baby. count. That, they don't even count that though. They don't even count that when when Solitaire man. They, but, yeah, but I'm saying Xbox doesn't count that team as part of Xbox. That's you know, it's not like listed under it. Xbox's you know things. I count it, bro. And then the global publishing unit, right? And then here was Sony at the time building up because they had built up at the end of last gen when the PS3 was a disaster. They had refocused on first party, bought some studios. And, like, Sony was gearing up, and then, you know, 2018 started dropping, like, the God of Wars and the Spider-Mans, which it was just like, at that time, Xbox fans were like, what the hell? And suddenly, slowly but surely, because it takes a long time to steer these huge luxury ships, you know, these huge steamliners, it's like Phil gets the position at the leadership table, and you thought, okay, this is the beginning of something. We didn't know what, like we couldn't predict in 2017 where everything was going to be in 2023. And the other thing, it's not over. This is not the end, folks. This isn't the end. This is probably just the middle of the story. This isn't the conclusion of the story. This isn't the apex of the story. It's certainly not the beginning, but I'll tell you what, this isn't going to be the end. ABK is not the last thing Microsoft acquires. And I know that strikes fear into the hearts of you know certain people, but this isn't this isn't the end, folks. Right? It's like Phil takes takes the reins, announces five studios in 2018. Uh, and it was like what, like Playground Games, uh, Ninja Theory, Compulsion, uh, Undead Fish Labs, two. and I, I forget. I, you know, I'm doing all this off the top of my head, so I, I think I I forget one of them. And, bro. Oh, and they announced the formation of the ish- initiative. And Phil said at the end of the show about how he wanted to build a industry-leading first-party studio organization. And at the time, we were like, "Yeah, it's nice to want things, Phil. <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> yeah, you know, like it's it's. I want that too. I want to be rich and I want to be skinny and I want to be." handsome and have all the girls throwing themselves at me we all have dreams we aspire to phil you know it's great <laughs> you know but it, it sort of felt like it was it was it, it sort of felt to me that it was a little bit it was, it was like too late it was it was it was like a little too late um it was like all right well you, you kind of threw away the 360 gen where you could have invested when you were the dominant player but you didn't you you relied on third-party marketing deals with call of duty and some of the bigger franchises to spread the gospel of Xbox to people. You relied on your deals with, you know, global publishing for stuff. And that all blew up in your face the previous generation when you tried to change how people gamed. It was like, uh oh, well, we're going to change. Everything is now DRM and always online. And how you buy games is going to be different uh, before. And Sony was like, we're keeping everything the same. And everybody's like, thank God. Thank God for Sony. And Microsoft never recovered. Even Phil on the kind of funny interview was with Paris. Like, we lost a generation you couldn't lose, right? So even when Phil announced those five studios in 2018, it felt like a little too late. It was like, yeah, nice, nice. this is a nice gesture, but this, you know, this isn't going to change anything. It's, it's too late to really matter. And then later that year, they ended up buying In Exile and Obsidian at XO 2018. And it was like, okay, well, those are some good pickups. At the time, you were really, you were like in exile, yes, right? Because yeah. you're loving it. But even, but me, I was just like eh, in exile, way, eh. funniest, you know, funniest time dev in the right. In exile is the funniest dev in the world. Have you seen in exile's Twitter account? I have. Average, they, they are pretty. They are pretty funny. 2019 saw us fill by Double Fine, which you know led to Psychonauts two, um, and then 2020, the historic splash of bethesda and then you started thinking to yourself oh okay they are serious about this this isn't some individual studio that may be suffering from financial problems like uh, those other studios were well maybe not all of them but some of them some of them just didn't want to be independent anymore and didn't want to go through the the hustle and bustle of trying to sell their games to publishers i mean obsidian fergus had talked about that i think ninja theory is like we didn't want to do this anymore we wanted we wanted stability and security that Microsoft could provide, even though we didn't really trust them. So it was like, okay, 
uh, we want creative, or whatever they were asking for. It was like Microsoft had to prove themselves because before that, before Phil, there was this narrative that Xbox meddles too much, right, in, in game development, that you don't want to be owned but because like they will come in and they will change things and it's not a really good place for creatives to work at. Um, and that was what it was like maybe under Don Matrick and before. And it was like, it sort of seemed like, okay, well, now they got Bethesda. They have all the studios. You went from seven to 22. You're like, yeah, this is, this could be something. This, and, but at that point you were like, okay, Xbox is probably done. Right. Satya is like, all right, we spent $7 billion and some change on some stuff. Are we real? Are we spending any more? I want to see someone return for my money first before it really start splurging. And honestly, it wasn't even until this year, this year, the last couple months that we have seen the impact of Bethesda's acquisition on Xbox. It literally has just started right now, right? That's the other thing you got to keep in mind is Xbox bought Bethesda in 2020, but we haven't seen any fruit from that acquisition until literally right now. It took a couple years. So finally, and we haven't even seen some of the games from Xbox Game Studios that they acquired in 2018. We're still waiting for Hellblade and Avowed, Perfect Dark and all that sort of stuff, but they're all right around the corner. So it's like, okay, you know, the pandemic really screwed stuff up for everybody. We're over that and we're coming here. And 2023 was a great year for Xbox. Could have been better if Redfall was an actual good game. I know they updated it to 60 frames and stuff, and people say it's better. Maybe it is. Haven't tried it for myself yet. But, you know, when you release Hi-Fi Rush and Starfield and Forza Motorsport and Minecraft Legends and Age of Empires 2 and Age of Empires 4 on console, and you start releasing more games than you ever had before, people are like, okay, all right, yeah. And, you know, but even even still, like an 83 for Starfield wasn't good enough or an 85 isn't good enough for Forza Motorsport because people are always pulling the goalposts. They're always dragging it back, right? Uh, like somehow like an 85 for Forza Motorsport's really a 65, right? So you, mm. have, you have Bethesda finally coming in and helping drop titles because we've seen their leak roadmap we know that it's working on something, could be Doom Year Zero. We know that Zenimax Online's working on something, which is Project Kestrel. We know Machine Games is coming with Indiana Jones, right? We know that Arcane Leon, who just shipped Deathloop, is working on something. Maybe it's Dishonored 3, maybe it's Deathloop 3. Arcane Austin is trying to fix, Ar- is trying to fix Redfall, but they might be working on a new project, right? Tango... Are they doing a Ghostwire Tokyo 2, Hi-Fi Rush 2? Either way, like, those games are all going to be coming. Like, they're all right around the corner and alongside the Xbox Game Studio stuff. And now you add another, what, is it 10 studios to the, to the pile? Yeah. On top of it. So now you go from 5 in 2017 to 6 years later to 32 or 33 or whatever it is if you include Xbox Global Publishing. Because there are still Xbox Global Publishing games that exist that we don't haven't been announced or that haven't even really been talked about like contraband was revealed in 2021 i don't know where contraband is oh but it's i've con- uh, i've got an update on that by the way oh okay okay i've, I've at least confirmed the game is still in development well i mean <laughs> uh, w- 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 <laughs> that's some, some good that's reporting some... there jazz thank you it's not that's been canceled right. ladies and gentlemen <laughs> contraband still exists hey that, that was that was hard to come by that information well why but yeah is... contraband well, yeah, contraband. <laughs> but I'm just saying. So you have you have you know contraband. There's even some you know like the project uh, IO Interactive, Project Dragon, Project Fantasy. Is that still an Xbox game? There's still some other you know global publishing titles that haven't been revealed yet. So you have all these other games. Now you add ABK on top of it with you know your yearly or biannual you know Call of Duty titles being worked on by Nine Studios. Uh, Blizzard and all their employees with their game. They have a, a new game, Odyssey, set to release next year or the year after. Yeah. You have the mobile stuff, you know, the COD War, you know, the COD Mobile and Candy Crush on, on stuff, and like the Game Pass you can sell to them. And then you think about like, okay, the future of Xbox. When you think about all that, where they went through six years ago, where they are now, Phil's mission statement of creating an industry leading first party. And now it's like you sit back and you're like, Okay, damn, he, he meant what he said, and he certainly backed up what he said. 
you know, because we had talked about 2022 can't ever happen again. You have all these studios. You can't have a drought like that. And even with the emails that leaked out, they even mentioned it was a disaster, which we had talked about then. This is a disaster for Xbox, but some fans didn't want to hear that. They're like, oh, you're too negative. It's just whatever. It doesn't mean much. They literally said themselves it was a fucking disaster. Phil, it was, it was a disaster, but some fans don't want to hear that shit, which is interesting. <laughs> An interesting aside here, tangent, Jez. Um, you know how much I love Wheel of Time, right? My the book series. Oh no! Just, just uh, yeah, yeah, it's great. I love Wheel of Time. Yeah, no, I love I'm hearing saying, about it as well. Listen, listen, listen. You know how much Let's I love. Let's hear all about no, Wheel of Time. Jez, you know what? I have to listen to you Wheel talk about World of Warcraft almost on every single show. You can, well, you dude, can listen World to me talk. Warcraft's relevant. No, it's, it's not. It's, it's, it has it's not relevant. No, it's literally, it's literally an Xbox game. Bro, it's it would, literally relevant. I don't care. It doesn't matter. If Xbox bought Nintendo next week and Pokemon was an Xbox game, I would still be like, I don't give a shit about Pokemon, okay? It doesn't matter. Some things just don't matter. But Damn. I'm trying to tie this into some Xbox fans being like, you know, you're too negative sometimes or we don't like the criticism or whatever. And You are pretty negative, though. Me? I'm way more positive about everything than you are. You're the negative one. That's not true. That is 100% was, true. I was, and I think everybody in chat... I was chat, the one who was like 100% like, oh, this deal's going through, no problem. Oh, yeah, and you sure. were like, nah, man, it's going to get blocked, and So man. much show that I was like, yeah, let's bet let's bet chip. Let's bet a hot chip. And I won. I, I was going to bet money. But either way, the point I was trying to make was I love Wheel of Time. Not the TV show, the book series. So I was super interested in the, in the, in the book series getting adapted to you know, uh, Amazon Prime. Season one, not very good. I think I gave it like a six out of 10. But I'm going to keep watching because I love the series. I want to see where it goes. Season two, been a lot better. Probably would give it a seven and a half. Step up in every possible way. But still, they just don't have enough episodes to do the characters justice. Like, you need more time. So, one of the pillars of the Wheel of Time community on Twitter and on YouTube is uh, Matt Hatch, who runs the Dusty Wheel on YouTube. And him and like another huge booktuber, Daniel Green, who's also loves Wheel of Time and built his channel on that. They were doing a live watch along with Brandon Sanderson, who's my current favorite author, who finished the Wheel of Time after Robert Jordan died, right? Finished the last three books after Robert Jordan died. Universally loved. His books are amazing. Stormlight Ar Archive and Mistborn and all that stuff. But people love how he ended the Wheel of Time. Right, but he's been critical of the Wheel of Time show. So they did a live stream where they reacted to the Wheel of Time TV series, the final episode. And during the show, Brandon was kind of given some critiques, some behind the scenes, because he's a producer on the show, and he was, you know, uh, he'll be like, "Oh, maybe you should change this. Maybe you shouldn't change this. Whatever to try to make it more like the books, or at least have more the themes come across." And bro, the, the the Wheel of Time community on Twitter lost their minds on Sanderson. Because Why? they couldn't stand the criticism of something they loved. Right? They couldn't huh. stand someone else's opinion about something. And because they liked the show, well, some of them liked the show. Like, they were like, screw Brandon Sanderson. I'm never listening to him again. I'm stopping reading his book series. And it's just so funny to see the guy who literally finished the series for fans even though he is slightly critical about how things could be better, the fans of Wheel of Time have, like, turned their back on Brandon Sanderson, which is kind of related to the Aww. times where, like, because of his own personal opinion, and it kind of relates to what we're talking about because sometimes there's some Xbox fans that turn their back on us because sometimes we might be a little too negative or we criticize Xbox because, you know... they're. Uh, and con contrary to how some people believe that we're nothing but a bunch of shills and then we get Microsoft talking points in our emails every single week and we just praise Xbox to the high heavens and never have anything bad to say, right? When we, if you actually watch the show, that's not the case. In fact, sometimes, you know, people, I think we're sometimes too harsh on Xbox and we can critique them so much. Xbox definitely thinks we're too harsh on Xbox, actually. Xbox um, thinks we're too hard on Xbox. Like, is this is yeah, this actual feedback from from people at Xbox? Yeah, I I heard that repeatedly when I was in LA. Actually, what that like oh. Xbox Two is too harsh on Xbox? Yeah. Or oh, well, me specifically. Well, you they were talking about they were talking about some of my articles, not necessarily the podcast, but you know, some some of my articles did come up in conversation about 
you know, me being harsh. And I was, again, and it happened today as well. Like I, I said in my, my article today about the future of Xbox, I was talking about how trash Microsoft's support is. And it is trash. I'm sorry, it is trash. I'm, I'm trying to deal with them right now and having a nightmare because they won't reply about my, my broken Surface keyboard. Um, but like when I get when I go to Activision, I'm like, hey, Activision, I got an issue with my World of Warcraft account. Instant replies. Instant replies, Microsoft. Do you know how support works? That's how it's supposed to work. Anyway. Hmm. Brad Sanderson, Brandon Sanderson, Bra- what is his name? Sam Sanderson, Sam Branderson. I can't remember. Um, I am stunned that people actually watch YouTube videos about books. That's yeah. intru- That's intriguing to me. People watch YouTube videos about everything, anything, and everything, bro. But either way, you know, you know what? Um, I discovered recently that's kind of addictive. What? Pimple popping YouTube. Excuse have you, me. Have you seen this? No. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You can watch YouTube videos of people bursting pimples and blackheads and cysts and all that kind of stuff. And these videos, Rand, have millions of hits. Mm. Millions with we're an doing, M. We're doing the wrong content then. Yeah, we're doing the wrong content. We should do pimple popping videos. I'm telling you, man. It's the future of YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Little tangent there for you about yeah. pimples. Brad Sanderson, whatever his name Shut is. Shut up. You're and n- intentionally saying Wheel his name of wrong. Lame. Yeah. What, Wheel of Lame. Uh, we have uh, Neon Black in the super chat. You know, says, mm, what? if Wheel of Time was good, they, they would have made a game about it. They did, like years ago on the PC. No, they didn't. Yeah, they did. Anyways, I'm going to get back to the Super Chats because there's a lot of them. We have Neon Black in the Super Chat saying, Happy birthday, Jez. Extra spankings today because you were wrong. Yes, he deserves all the spankings. Ah, man. Wheel of Time is a first-person shooter game. Developed by Legend Entertainment. Fun speculation, (laughs) Mav. Shout out to you, buddy. He says, Happy birthday, Jez. Thank you for your constant pessimism. Thank you. Yes, Jez is the Thank reason. Thank you. Uh-huh. Thank you. Mav, Mav gets it. LA Chargers fan, who is Xbox purchasing next? Is Guitar Hero back? I mean, you, you know, you read the interview uh, that Jez posted about, which, by the way, shame on you, IGN. Shame on you for not crediting oh, my yeah. man, my man Jez, and just being like, <laughs> like, just saying, oh, uh, Guitar Hero might come back. Source, Window Central. Where's the link? Where's the link, bruh? Yeah, IGN? I like- I swear to God, right? IGN, I was I was pissed about that, and the reason is was because we actually screwed up recently in the same way. Like we, someone at Windows Central, uh, a freelancer, wrote an article about something and didn't give IGN a backlink, and it, it, it was there. It, to be, it was IGN's information, and we didn't give a backlink. Their editor was in touch with me, and they were like, "Oh my God, I can't believe you guys have done this." And I was like, oh shit, yeah, we should have given you a backlink. That was really shitty of us. It's it's a it's a policy to do backlinks and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, they threw the backlink in there um, as requested. And then a few weeks later, IGN's out there doing the same. And they think, mm. oh yeah, a, li- a, li- a little bit of via window central text is enough. That That's enough. No, bro, give me my goddamn link. Mm-hmm. I want my link, bro. Dude, they're, YouTubers they're- do it. Dude, they're forgetting they're it? forgetting to put the Xbox logo into multi-platform games. So when people watch it, they're like, this game's not coming to Xbox. And now they're forgetting to link and credit Windows Central? Yeah, well, they, they credited us. But their, their social media it's their social media team didn't think it was ne- it's necessary to link to the content they share. And it's become a trend, man. Dexerto does this all the time. Other websites do this all the time. They're just like, oh, yeah, here's the content. It's via this random account. By the way, there's no link to that person, even though we've produced engagement from the content that we've stolen. Like Lad Bible does this all the time. There's a bunch of these shitty websites that don't make any original content, just retweet or reblog or repost other people's content. And it sucks because that's not fair. You know, it's not it's not right, man. If you're gonna if you're gonna share something that someone else has exclusively produced, you better damn well give them a link. Whenever I post a meme, I use the, I add the link. I do it every single time. Is this the right thing to do? But anyway, tangent again. Tangent again. What were we talking about, Mark, before? We're talking about James Corden. The 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 Jez from home. Jez yeah, from the, home, je- Jez the Jez from home. I was saying, is Guitar Hero back? Well, according to what Bobby Kotick, when we mentioned it before, it seems like the revival is coming. And who is Xbox purchasing next? Well, this is why I said the story's not over. 
ABK is, ABK is not the end of the tail. It's just maybe no. the, the middle. Because now that this is finally off their chests and out of their dockets, Microsoft can potentially pursue Singular Studios, which, you know, Embracer's having a lot of problems. There were some layoffs at Crystal Dynamics. They shut down Volition. Uh, you know, there's been some other studios that have been laid off, and it's like, Crystal Dynamics is working on Perfect Dark. Idols Montreal is working on uh, Fable. So it's like, now, now's the time if you're going to make a move to, to grab those, maybe grab the Tomb Raider IP or whatever, and bring those into uh, Xbox Game Studios. Maybe maybe change the initiative to Crystal Dynamics. I don't know. Like, put give Matt his... Uh, um, who's the head of... Uh, Daryl Gallagher's team back, right? Or, yeah, hey, him, we have um, Creative Assembly working on Tatanka, supposedly, some Halo, big Halo project. Um, they also work on a lot of other... So it's like, you should probably maybe see if you should bring them into the fold. You don't want to lose them to somebody else. Uh, a Sobo, right? Uh, they're putting out like what Microsoft flight sim. They got the 10 year deal with them. They're putting out Microsoft flight sim next year. You know, they're makers of plagues tale. I would also think that'd be a studio you'd want to heavily invest in, bring them into the fold if you can. Uh, you know, so it's like, yeah, you know, if you look at like what maybe individual studios you might need to shore things up like is io interactive somebody you want to work 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 with more do you like your relationship with project assuming project dragon or project fantasy is still with xbox is that something you want to further along now that abk is completely gone i think those are things you can pursue now but then it comes down to japan because they constantly fill Sarah Bond. They all talk about this. And even when the ABK deal was going through, they're like, we're not done acquiring because our competition's not done acquiring. Tencent's acquiring stuff. Sony's acquiring stuff. And they talk, I mean, they've talked consistently about the East. And we know from internal documentation that they wanted to acquire Sega at one point. Phil even asked for approval, uh, you know, for the board and, 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 and to get it. And I still think Sega is maybe the last piece of the Xbox puzzle. Granted, it wouldn't necessarily excite me that much, but I know it would excite a lot of the fan base. Um, so yeah, I I, I think I, I I don't think this is the end. I think this is nope. It's just the middle. You agree with me, right? Like if you had if you had to put your money on like wh- what is what is, who do they target next, Jez? Well, the the next. Microsoft's sort of working towards a strategy here. They're they're building a mobile gaming store, mm-hmm. you know, and that's kind of what this strategy is all about. The the other stuff that ABK brings, like the 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 sort of legacy, the legacy of ABK, the console content, and um, the Game Pass value and all that stuff. It, ABK was always like the, fir- the the dream acquisition because they help Xbox in every single way. But also, with this big mobile push, they're gearing up to do, right? And the mo- the whole the whole idea behind this mobile push is, and this this I'm surprised I was actually incorrect about this rant. Okay, I thought Microsoft was betting on Apple having to open up their store, um, but apparently the legislation's already done. That so that that's it. They are Apple is going to have to open up their store uh, to side loading from march 2024 um the european union has done a i can't remember the name the exact name of the legislation but it's like the digital markets act or some some bullshit like that i can't remember exactly but basically apple has been designated a gatekeeper a gatekeeper company and gatekeeper companies are now required by the european union to allow side loading of different services uh, content delivery mechanisms and payment systems and all that kind of stuff. They can't, they can't control exclusive means of distribution anymore on their platforms if they if they're above a certain size. Now Microsoft, Microsoft was designated a gatekeeper company too, but it doesn't matter because Windows is already open. You can already install Steam, you can already install Epic Games or whatever you want on Windows. It doesn't matter. And uh, Google was also designated a gatekeeper company that, but you can also sideload on. Um, you can also side loan on Android, so it's not 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 a big issue for app uh, for Google. But Apple is the one that's all locked down and and horrible and nasty. And Microsoft's kind of like, well, okay, 
what we're going to do now is we're going to try and offer developers a better deal. We'll offer developers instead of 30% cut on mobile, we'll, I don't know, we'll, maybe we'll do something like Epic Games where it's like 11% sliding up or something. And then like we'll also, the way we'll market this store is we'll put Call of Duty Mobile, Diablo Mall, Hearthstone, all this kind of stuff. We'll make them exclusive to our storefront. Also, Epic Games, uh, they'll come along for the ride because they hate Apple as well. They hate Apple as much as us. So let's bring Apple, uh, let's bring Epic Games along for the ride. And um, and then, you know, Genshin Impact, MiHoYo, Apple recently deleted one of Genshin Impact's apps from the App Store because Genshin Impact devs dared suggest in their forum that um, users can purchase, purchase in-app stuff from uh, their website instead of via the Apple Store or whatever. So I think there's a lot of devs that will come along for the ride. And that's kind of, that's kind of the middle bit in terms of, uh, you know, Microsoft's longer term strategy for the Xbox ecosystem. But for, for things that we're really concerned about, and I know nobody here really cares that much about uh, mobile gaming, although I do, I have heard, by the way, that Microsoft does want to put Xbox achievements and the Xbox social graph in these games. So like you'll be able to get Xbox achievements playing Candy Crush, Hearthstone, whatever. And that's something they are exploring to achieve. Um, well, quick tangent, but, you, know, uh, you know, interesting you brought that up, right? I don't know. Oh. I, I did see today that True Trophies, which is the sister site to True Achievements, said mm-hmm. that they've discovered that Sony ha- is, is doing PC trophies. Yeah, I did. I did hear that. So yeah, so, that's interesting. So I, I think yeah, I think we'll see, we'll see Xbox double down on some of this kind of stuff as well in the future. But um, one of the other things that, um, but you know, for for us and like I say, no, not a lot of us here are hardcore mobile gamers. You know, we we're more interested in how this benefits us on Game Pass and and Xbox and PC and and stuff like that. And obviously, there's going to be benefits to that end. But the the middle the middle of this strategy is really like what else do they need? What other benefits are there that Xbox needs right now? And some of it is mobile games. Some of it is much more mobile games and more more mobile expertise. And what studios bring that kind of expertise? You know, what studios have the franchises that could adapt well to mobile? Or like you know, if if they want to. If they want to make like a Genshin Impact clone, or if they want to make anime waifu gacha games and stuff like that, you probably need a Japanese publisher, a Japanese studio, right? Square Enix has a bunch of gacha games based on the Final Fantasy IP. They just they just um, they just launched another one uh, based on Final Fantasy VII, which I, I tried. I can't remember what it's called. I think it's called Final Fantasy Ever Crisis or something like that. I thought it was absolutely awful. But there are people that love that kind of game, man. But again, for us, we'd be more interested in what this will solve for Xbox. So imagine they buy Square Enix for their mobile gaming uh, expertise. And Square Enix does have mobile gaming expertise. On the flip side, it also means we won't have to worry about whether Final Fantasy or Square Enix games come to the platform anymore, Mm -hmm. which has been a huge area of contention for Microsoft and something we've given feedback to Phil on and something Phil has said that he was going to fix. And... When Phil says he's going to fix something, it certainly seems like he delivers on his promises, you know. Um, and, you know, and then you can get into all the other things. you got Crystal Dynamics, like you said. Maybe Crystal Dynamics joins Xbox. You've got, um, you know, what other studios could they, they purchase that have similar, similar gaps that would fill gaps for Xbox? You know, people always talk about Sega, you know, Capcom said they didn't want to be acquired, but it's not up to them because they're a publicly traded company. Microsoft overpays like they did for Activision. Then, yeah, you could see Capcom maybe. You know, there's a, there's a huge amount of other potential targets Microsoft could have because, again, this is about Google. This is about Apple. It's, ne- it's not about PlayStation. It never has been, you know. Any benefits there are sort of on the side and um, ambient and stuff like that. So, ambient, yeah. I like that. It's ambient. Or ambient, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so we have Elijah Vasquez, member for 13 months. This is it, fellas. Happy birthday, Jez, and happy ABK Day, everyone. Jax82 says, Jez also said they better not F up WoW. Yeah, well, they would, uh, a lot of people would be upset if they screwed up WoW. Do you think they'll bring WoW to console? Yes, they will bring WoW to console. Oh, you think, so you think World of Work, so, but they won't, will they include it to in Game Pass, or will it just always be, it's like, 
own subscription. That's a little bit. That's that's a little bit more iffy. I think like what they might do is they might include it in the subscription that you don't have to buy the base game or the expansion or something. But maybe maybe the subscription you still have to pay for separately. I'm honestly not sure about that because my gut feeling is no, they won't bring it to the to the um to the subscription in much the same way that. Uh, Minecraft Realms isn't in the subscription and Fallout 76's premium subscription isn't in the Game Pass. But they do have these sort of Game Pass Ultimate perks where like you get three months of Minecraft Realms, for example. So maybe it's like you get three months of World of Warcraft, you know, for new users. Or like, you know, you can play up to level 10 levels above the cap or you get the expansions for free or something. I think there will be some kind of benefits. But I think like the business model of WoW is that you have to subscribe, you know. Okay. I don't I don't know if that I don't know if it works. I think like there's probably a lot of overlap they could achieve. And removing the subscription is probably not the best way to go about it. All but right. I think there'll be some benefit. Uh we have uh Chrono ten thirty one says first time live. Always listen on Apple Podcasts, but today is special, so I'm here live. Love you guys and keep up the good work. Hashtag Toys for Bob. Hashtag Banjo 3. I love seeing people in the chat uh, who come and say, hey, I discovered you guys on an audio platform, and this is my first time watching the show live. That's awesome. Uh, Welcome. Beca- yeah, because we didn't, we didn't start putting Xbox 2 on audio platforms until, what, like a year in? I think it was like 53 episodes, 60 episodes. Uh, that, it was it was quite quite a while in yeah yeah and now yeah so I love the fact that you know people can watch on YouTube live and interact with the chat and have a good time and you know whatever uh, and or you could just listen to it on YouTube later or listen to it at your own you know however you want through whatever store Apple Spotify you know I, I think that's we just we just want people to listen I mean I wouldn't particularly it's like it, we, it's like we don't really have a preference for how you guys listen, right? Uh, you know, so it's like if you want to listen, as long as you enjoy it, yeah, as long as you enjoy it, it's not like oh no, you have to listen on YouTube or you have to listen live. It's like no, it's it's why the that's there because we know people want a different a variety of different uh, ways yeah. to listen to the show. So it's always super cool to see someone being like, hey, I discovered you on this other platform. And, you know, this is my first time live. It really does, like, make me happy when I see stuff like that. Uh, yeah. Sean, he says, happy birthday, Jez Alcord 19. Jez Alcord 19, <laughs> happy birthday. Butterball 8 says, so with the purchase complete, does that mean with Call of Duty launching this November, will Microsoft revenue for the Xbox division is the highest? So now that it's complete in October, yes. So October, November, December will basically probably be the highest three months in Xbox revenue history. So yeah, yeah, this this Call of Duty that's launching in November is going to be included in Xbox financials. So... They, they, like, they, it's crazy to think that Xbox is about to publish the biggest game of 2023. It's Call of Duty Modern well, Warfare 3. technically Activision is publishing it, just like Starfield is technically published, published by Bethesda still, right? Yeah, technically. My technically. Mind, Technically, my ass, bro. But you know what I'm surprised that we didn't get today, Jez? I'm surprised mm. we didn't get Game Pass numbers. Hmm. Right? Because it's officially closed. I mean, maybe they could announce it next week. I was expecting, like, oh, it's closed, and we're welcoming the teams and the franchises to Xbox with our leading industry-leading Game Pass subscription service that now has 40 million members because they haven't, had, they haven't updated the numbers since they first acquired it. ABK in January of 2022. They haven't talked about it since. And they did the conversion of Xbox Live Gold members to Core just last month. Starfield came out. Forza Motorsport came out. So I thought we would get numbers. Maybe they saved that for the financial call on October 24th, where Microsoft goes over their uh, their earnings re- report. And I'm sure they'll maybe there'll be questions about the ABK stuff and Xbox. Or, I don't know. I, I, w- I was kind of surprised we didn't get those numbers, to be honest with you. Because it, it's been a yeah. long time since they've shared them. Could be later. Could be later, yeah. Uh, Sith Lord says, breaking news, Xbox has games? More at 11. Mm-hmm. BT Maverick I'm says, sure. happy birthday, Jezzy Poo. 
Thank you for all the double, triple, reverse jinx. We couldn't have done it without you. Triple, reverse jinx. Triple I'm the reverse. jinx master. Actually. Yeah. Meat Puppet says, happy birthday, Jez. Stop the cap. <laughs> yeah, stop lying, Jez. <laughs> the Jakester says, happy birthday, Jez. It's been a long road, but we made it. We are definitely here. The one yeah. and only Hargi Chani. Rand's channel is above 100K. ABK acquired, and yet still no Rand on camera. What's up with that? Hey, Jez. Oh, he's got a point. Well, yeah. You know, I mean, the camera stuff will come in time. Don't worry. You know, I uh, I actually ordered a new camera. In did you? What'd you get? In in light of us planning to do this, I ordered the uh, the crazy Sony. See, I am a Sony fan. I ordered a Sony camera. I ordered the Sony. Um, what's it called? The Z. What's it? Majig. The one everyone uses. Mm, okay. <laughs> uh, it's uh, um, I bought it in the Prime Day sales because it was like. 30% off or something. So I was like, yeah, I'll cap that. Okay. And um, you should get something like that. I think Gaz uses it. Yeah, I was thinking about it. I, I'm the Cold's trying to get me to buy a lo- the Logitech 4K one, but Gaz is nah, like, get the nah, nah, Sony nah, nah, camera. Nah. But, you know, I just, get the Sony so. camera. Gaz is right. Webcams suck, man. Don't, yeah. don't get a webcam. Uh, we have Joe you don't, Repco. Get, you don't get the cool buck here. Thing. AKA Flame says, happy birthday, Jez John. Blizzard Kun finally come home to Xbox no matter how hard Jim lying, <laughs> flying, crying, dancing in the rain, Ryan fought against it. <laughs> dancing uh, in the rain? Dancing in the rain. <laughs> I'm going to be so disappointed when we when Jim's gone and we won't be able to mention him anymore. Yeah, that is crazy. It's like the Sony news right now is that Jim Ryan has gone. Mm-hmm. And the Xbox news right now is that they've acquired ABK. Yeah, it's such a it's such a. Not only that, not, not like only that news cycle right now. There's also other Sony news because they revealed the PS5 Slim as well, which we'll talk about. Um, Ralph Wiggum. And also the ru- the rumors that um, what's it called? What's it called's been canceled. Oh, Jason, last I of saw the Dre- Yeah, I saw Jason Schreier pulled some cold water on that rumor, but people want to know what's going on with factions too. Um, but yeah, it's great. The news cycles. Very favorable to Xbox for a change. It's not often we see that. Uh, Ralph Wiggum says, Happy birthday, Jez. 100K subs and Activision Blizzard is a part of Xbox. Perfect time for face cam, Rand. Uh, this is actually being the worst time. And we're going to do that stuff when it's going to be low key, so I don't have to worry about it. Huffy Bear. Uh, he says, Is Jez going to finish Persona 5 to celebrate the acquisition finally completing? He should, Huffy. He absolutely should, but he won't. <laughs> he won't. I will. I will. I'm. I'm playing. I'm playing Battlefield right now. Oh, okay. Actually, Battlefield's good now. They made it good. Is it good? It is. It's good. I'm enjoying it actually. Ooh. Um, the, it's season six now, and the you know feels better, more stable, more, more responsive. I'm liking it. I'm enjoying Battlefield. Who? Who? Shit. Who'd have thought? Yeah. Uh. Oh, with the one and only Akami Games from Twitter, always blowing up Twitter. It says congrats oh, to Microsoft. Games is awesome. And the entire Xbox community on this historic day. Also, happy birthday, Jez. Here's a quick $69 billion for the crew. Oh, man. Yeah. Akami's awesome. I met Akami at uh, uh, E3. Well, the not E3 event. The not E3. I hate the, I hate the fact that it's not E3, but it is E3. It's still E3 in my head. I met, I met him at E3 2023. I'm going to call it E3. I don't care. It's kind of like Twitter is being called X. It's still called Twitter. It's still Twitter. It'll always be Twitter. Cra- it. Yeah, it'll always be Twitter. There's no way I'm ever going to think of it as X. But uh, or, the same with E3. I'm never going to think of it as Summer Game Fest. It's always going to be E3 forever. But um, yeah, Akami's awesome. Shout out to him. Yeah. Uh, Supernova says, Jez, I want you to make AI-generated photo a boss from Beans Heads, the ABK company, after, ABK- after Bobby Kotick left. Happy birthday. <laughs> yeah, I've I'm I've been using AI a lot recently for my header images. Yeah, you um, have. I feel guilt I feel guilty though because like apparently just five queries of AI wastes like a whole bottle of water. Yeah. So I'm I'm actually destroying the planet by generating AI. That's not Thanks, good. Microsoft. No, it's, um, not it's about time, Jez. So do we uh we we need to do our ad read for the wonderful people at Valari Pillow, correct? Do we? But I'm trying to defend this node, man. Well, Hang on a I mean, let's, let's get it. Up. You got, you got to do it. It's, it's time. And I contractually you know, obligated. I actually you? have. They sent me a Valari Pillow with the uh, our little logo on it and stuff. And oh, congrats! You got it. I did get it. I did get it. And I've been using it when I read, and I actually like it quite a bit. <laughs> it's actually quite comfortable to read books with. Oh, we, we, oh, with books. Yeah, I didn't th- yeah, I didn't think of it with books. I, I'm using it right now. Play Battlefield. Like, I, I kind of can't go without it now. 
It's mm. just, it's so much more pleasant to have your arms raised up a little bit when you're, you know, gaming or playing Steam Deck or Asus ROG or, or whatever. But anyway, yeah. Today's show is sponsored by the wonderful Valori, and I'm just going to put their link in the chat so you guys can and, check it yeah, out. Everything's in the description as well if you want to. Uh, the link is there if yeah. you want to get your own Valori pillow. Yeah, so here comes the ad read from Valari. If you're like me, and you enjoy a long gaming session, even if you don't finish games, according to Rand, uh-huh. then you know that eventually pain and discomfort start to set in. Could be your shoulders, your neck, or maybe your wrists. It all depends on how you sit and try to get a comfortable position, but in most cases, it won't be good for your posture, Rand, putting unnecessary strain on one body part or another. And as we get older... I'm 37. I know all about this. Mm-hmm. About these body parts. Sometimes you wake this... up and your a new body part hurts, and it's like, what? What? <laughs> yeah. I the other day I woke up and my shoulder was killing me. Like I slept on it wrong all day. It was just yeah. throbbing. Uh, we need a awful. Valari pillow for, for sleeping now. Yeah. And, um, but this is where the Valari gaming pillow steps in. Not just any ordinary pillow rant. It's designed specifically with gamers in mind, providing ergonomic support and cushioning for those long gaming sessions. Picture this. You're deep into an intense gaming session in Battlefield, getting killed as you're trying to do an ad read, (laughs) playing demons, farming XP or building that kill streak. Over time, discomfort sets in and your focus starts to waver. Not with the Valari Rand. Inspired by a nursing pillow, Valari takes the best features and makes them even better. Valori's ergonomic design also keeps your spine aligned more naturally, thereby promoting better posture while you play. Trust us, your older self will thank you for that. If only Rand had Valori 10 years ago. Yeah, true and true that. <laughs> it's best for console gaming or handhelds like the Switch, Steam Deck, or Raj Ally. But the Valori isn't just for gaming. It's a versatile pillow that enhances your comfort while reading, watching movies, or simply relaxing on your couch. It comes in several versions. The Rare, which provides comfort and style at an affordable price. Legendary, which adds premium touch with a wide variety of color combinations and embroidery designs. With special IP license covers in the works. And launching soon, the Epic Valari, which is fully customizable pillow, allowing you to pick the colors, embroidery design, and even add your gamer tag. So man, no matter your budget or style, Valari has you covered. Visit Valari.gg or use the link in the description. Support the Xbox 2 podcast and experience the difference for yourself. And don't forget to use our special promo code XB2 for 15% off. That's XB2, 50% off at Valori.gg. Valori is also currently conducting a giveaway for their pillows, which you can check out in the description. Uh, it's a Gleam widget, so you can enter to win a Valori pillow for free, which is awesome. And uh, yeah, with Valori, treat yourself to the ultimate gaming companion. Yeah. And yeah, big shout out to Valori for sponsoring the show and supporting Xbox 2 podcast. And there's the ad read. Thanks, Valori. You guys are awesome. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so, someone noticed that I said the Rog ally instead of the ROG ally. Yeah, I, I, sometimes I just... It, it looks like Roger. Like Roger. <laughs> like Roger that. Yeah. That should, the, that should be the Asus Roger or something. I don't know. Uh, Frank in the Super Chat says, With Xbox making sure that Ubisoft is doing the cloud gaming, what's the betting that Xbox will buy Ubisoft the next two years? Zero percent. Because zero, zero, zero percent. I think I did see something from the CMA that said Microsoft is prohibited. Microsoft and Activision is prohibited from regaining those uh, streaming rights for the next ten years, or something like that. Ah, that's interesting. That was in one of their well, one of their things. So yeah, zero yeah. percent chance they buy Ubisoft. They can't. CMA wouldn't allow it. Essentially, they just block it yeah. outright. I think Microsoft will reacquire the rights after ten years. I think there's there's a, there's a few things that are sort of this. <laughs> it's funny because the divestiture of the cloud gaming rights might help Microsoft in a, in a weird kind of way. One of the issues with the cloud stuff is that it's so expensive right now. And Microsoft's cloud bandwidth, they want to use it. For, they don't want to use it for cloud gaming. They want to use it for AI. So this like potentially, Ubisoft will invest more in cloud gaming potentially, and then other companies will invest more in cloud gaming. You might even see a scenario where. You get special chips that are designed for cloud gaming, and maybe they're a little bit cheaper and stuff like that. Um, Because right now, it's really early and it's really expensive. So, yeah, I think in 10 years, the landscape will look a lot different for that. But this sort of lets Microsoft acquire ABK, focus on, you know, uh, growing the more important parts of the business, while also keeping 
their cloud business, the cloud business as a whole growing. So it's kind of funny. I really do think like one day the CMA is going to look at this stuff and, and they're going to be like, Microsoft really pulled one over on us here. Because <laughs> they made it all about cloud gaming. And it's just like, nobody gives a fuck about cloud gaming right now. So, mm. Even though PlayStation but, just uh, just announced theirs and how uh, they're going to be offering streaming as part of their premium tier and have all these like 4K, 1440p yeah. options, which Xbox couldn't do. They only offered 1080p. Sony's starting I actually, up theirs. Um, I, actually, I actually subscribed to PlayStation Plus Premium to try it out. Mm-hmm. Really good, man. Is it's it? So, it's so much better than it used to be. Like back in the day, uh, PlayStation Plus, uh, you know, cloud streaming was just not viable. It was just so damn laggy. Um, but you know, n- now it's it's totally viable. I was playing Bloodborne with it um, because you know it's not on PC yet, and I don't have a PlayStation. But you can play Bloodborne on PC via cloud streaming, and it's it's fine. You know, it's not as hyper respond. I wouldn't want to play like a first person shooter competitively on it, but for like a melee game with lock on and and stuff like that, it's really really good. Right. Uh, we have Danny Passion official saying Xbox has no games. Congrats to Xbox and all the gamers. Uh, Tim Shrimp says, this is awesome. Looking forward to some old IPs coming back and a lot of these games coming to Game Pass soon, day and date, next year. So, do we, are we, so they did the trailer, right? I've seen everybody talk on Twitter. I guess maybe I should read what Phil had to say, right? Let me get, let me get Phil's yeah, tweet up. Cause this, let's, you know, let's get Phil. This is, Phil. this is Philly Spence. Look, Philly, Philly P. Uh, he tweeted out, to, I, I bet he, I bet you there's like a huge burden off his shoulders from this, right? Like, Oh yeah, I can't. I can't imagine. Yeah, can't um, imagine. he said today is a good day to play. We officially welcome Activision Blizzard King to Team Xbox. Together, we'll create stories and experiences that bring players together in a culture empowering everyone to do their best work and celebrate diverse perspectives. And he has a link to his Xbox Newswire post. But he goes on to say, to the millions of fans who love Activision Blizzard and King Games, we know that you are the heart and the soul of these franchises, and we're honored to have you as part of our community. Whether you play an Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, PC, or mobile, you're always welcome here. Even if Xbox isn't where you play your favorite franchise. Because when everybody plays, when everyone plays, we all win. And they got this nice image of Activision Blizzard King joins Xbox. And, I don't know, the image is really cool. It's like, it's got Sea of Thieves next to Overwatch, next to Starfield, next to Tony Hawk, next to Candy Crush. Next to Doom, next to Fallout, next to StarCraft, next to Crash. And then underneath it, Elder Scrolls Online, next to Halo, next to Forza, next to COD, next to Hellblade, next to Warcraft, next to Diablo, next to Flight Sim, next to Minecraft. Like, seriously. <laughs> it's like, it's just like, wow. Right? And it's, it's wild, man. It is, it is absolutely wild. But... Um, do you think, do you think we can expect anything to happen next week? I know with the Bethesda acquisition, we had a round table where they sort of talked about, you know, they kind of chewed, chewed the fat, talked about some of their plans, gave us that Phil Spencer gave us that epic quote that people still bring up today about how games, uh, will only be on platforms where game pass exists. Now, obviously that's a different scenario with call of duty because they've given these deals out to everybody like candy, like you could call of duty for 10 years, you could call of duty for 10 years and you could call of duty for 10 years. So it's a little bit different in that regard and the cloud streaming stuff. But what do you see? What do you think is going to happen immediately next week? Maybe Friday is the wrong day to do it, but what do you think happens uh, in the immediate future next week for Xbox ABK deal? If anything? Well, I, I heard that they've, they're preparing some games to go into game pass right away. So like I was probably maybe even over the weekend or early next week. I think we'll see some classic Activision games. Um, I'm not expecting anything new. I mean, they even said, like, we're not going to put Call of Duty or Diablo 4 in there anytime soon. And, like, what would they? Those games are still selling, and the business models... The business models were never factored subscription services in there. So well, like, it's also, that, it, well, it's also of, like, Call of Duty probably legally can't. It's probably still well, under, that too. yeah, it's still under contract with PlayStation for the marketing because they have the marketing for it. So they probably can't add the new Modern Warfare until sometime next year. They did say next yeah. year in their tweet, both Diablo and Call of Duty. But yeah, so keep, go ahead, keep on going. Yeah, well, yeah, they they legally can't or whatever. But like, even even if they could, like, there's there's business models, business model considerations to make and shit like that. But um, I do think like some maybe some of the more classic COD games could go there. I think 
we could see Crash or the Spyro remasters go in there. You know, stuff like that, really. I think, get, like, for example, Crash, they might do it sort of slowly over time, you know, because, like, I think, like, if they just dump everything in there all at once, like, there's a ten there's a potentiality that um, some of the benefits might not pan out. So maybe they'll be like... We'll put Crash, whatever it's called. What is it? Crash Rumble? Crash Bash? Well, dude, there's there's called. a whole bunch of Crash games that they could, right? You could put the OG Crash games in there if they do decide to do some back and pat stuff. Uh, there's Crash 4 on the console. There's Crash Team Racing, I believe. Uh, there's the Crash yeah, but I was talking Crash about Trilogy. That. There's Crash Bash, right? There's four Crash games. Yeah, I was games. talking about that. Like, if if you were like, but like, if you put if you put everything in there all at once, is what I'm saying. If you put all the Call of Duty games in there, and then you also put Crash Bash in there, like Crash Bash is going to get overshadowed mm. when like Crash Bash is like whatever it's called. I can't remember exactly what it's called. I think it's called Crash Bash. Well, um, Jazz. That if you if you put that in there separately, if you put that in there separately, it could get an audience, you know. Mm. But what are you going to say? Well, we have a guest that just dropped by. Cold Eastwood is here. Oh, snaps, Colt. That's Colt. Hi. Right? What's up, Colt? I just, Snap, Colt I just, in the chat. I just want to say hi. Um, What's it's, going it's, on? It's, it's a great day. It's a great day for everyone. Oh, wow. Cra <laughs> yeah, crashed by Colt. How's it going, man? Yeah, it is, it's crazy. <laughs> I, I, how are you doing? You, rocking no, I, I, you I, really I told, crashed your car? I told, I told Colt if he wanted to drop by uh, for a few and talk, he, he definitely can. Because, you know, it's a celebration, bitches. Right, Colt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I thought I'd just stop by and say happy birthday to, to Jez. He turned 14. Mm. And um <laughs> <laughs> not quite. Not quite. Um, I wish. Or maybe actually, a multiple. I don't, don't want to be fought in, actually. That that would suck. Being fought in yeah, sucks. Would suck. I don't want to be fought in. Oh I, no, really I loved it. I didn't have to shave anymore. back then and yeah, it was it was wonderful. I I um, had to shave. I was 14. <laughs> you did? <laughs> I'm hairy, man. I've been I've been hairy for a long time. But but dude, like being fought in sucked because you couldn't just he had no money. That's the main thing. No money. He couldn't just buy any games. But then again, it doesn't really matter these days because you just got Game Pass or whatever. Mm. But anyway, Tangent, right. how are you doing? How are you doing, buddy? Uh, you doing? Really good. Really good. It's been kind of a crazy day with the news, you know, because it started for me at like midnight right before I went to bed and then uh, got up in the morning and started reporting on the stuff. And yeah, people have been crazy. I texted Colt. What time was it, Colt? Like one o'clock in the morning, my time. So like eleven years. I'm like, Colt, it's done. Yeah, yeah. CMA's approved it, and you're like, stop it. I'm in bed sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, oh, I mean, man. I tried to go to bed early because you. I was thinking the same thing you said. You said they might drop the news at six a.m. Pacific time, and I think they did. So, um, yeah. I mean, this is a really good thing for almost everybody involved. Like nearly almost everybody involved this thing the whole monopoly and consolidation thing is great it's a good thing mm. <laughs> <laughs> say what you want to say cold eastwood you don't have to beat around the bushes say what i want to say is that xbox now has a strong market position they're going to be making a lot of money that they could turn around and dump back into game pass and big support for their studios to continue to make bigger games than they did before because now they have like a viable uh financial support system and they are competing in a completely different way than the way that other platforms might. Like I'm telling people a lot lately that this is not about the console. This is not about Series S or Series X. This is about the games. It's about Xbox making games and bringing them to their customers and the way they want to play. And it's a whole paradigm shift that a lot of arguments are not properly addressing because if you want to play on an Xbox console or you want to play on a super killer expensive PC, or you want to play on a new handheld because like they're the new hotness you can. And as long as the games are great, you have a lot to look forward to. And when I make the joke about it's good for almost everybody, there are a small subset of people that will only play on, let's say a PlayStation five. They may miss out on certain titles that Xbox makes. That's just how it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause we were, we were talking about like the insane future that Xbox has. And how like the roadmap's insane. Yeah, the roadmap. I mean, I you, I don't know if anybody's seen Clobrel's tweet where he like literally has the entire like roadmap of all the studios that Xbox has. Like it's just insane to look at and to think like, you know, we're we're just really starting to see the benefits of Bethesda's acquisition finally, 
And mm-hmm. some of those studios that Xbox acquired are finally starting to get ready to ship their games. And then you add ABK on top of it. It's like Xbox is going to have games for a long, long time. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of ridiculous when you think about it. When Phil said in 2018 that he wanted to build an industry-leading first-party studio organization. Mm-hmm. On stage. And it's like, yeah. uh, how many studios later? Eight, uh, nine studios later and two publishers? And they still ain't done. This isn't the end of the story. They're still going to acquire more too. Oh, and that's going to rankle a lot of people. They're going to go really <laughs> upset. Rankle. Yeah, rankle. Rankle. Yeah, rankle. 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 No. Rancor. Right. Rancor. Rancor would be a better word. Rancor, like the uh, the creature in Return of the Jedi. Um, it is interesting when you say that, Rand, and you and I know full well, Jez, you probably have this picture in your mind. Phil on stage at E3 2018 with the denim jacket, and he mm-hmm. says, we're building an industry-leading first-party suite of studios. And I, I do. I was counting on my fingers when Ram was talking. It's most of those games won't come out till next year, so it's a full six years of development. And there's hardly any like carryover. I know you guys talked about this on on your show throughout the years, right? How in 2018 they bought all these studios, and then 2019, and there was no like overlap. Like everything went to all the games that were in the works from new studios went multi platform, right? Like they got In Exile and they got uh, Obsidian. And I like one other studio that released games that came to PlayStation through contractual obligations, same with Bethesda. So in 2024, not only are all those games from Xbox Game Studios starting to come out, but now the Bethesda stuff is banging and then Activision is going to be added. And it's um, it's been a long time coming. I mean, you you yeah. even had a tweet, Jez, listen to this. He. He even had a, had a tweet that Xbox could potentially release up to 10 games next year. Maybe. Probably won't. But still, the fact that they could release I, 10 I games. I said, I listed uh, out like six. I listed out six because you said behind the scenes to me, Rand, uh, you were like, uh, that someone, and maybe it was Jazz, was like, no, there no, could no, possibly it, be 10. It was, it was, Whatever it was, it was, it was just, there's so much stuff in the pipeline. Like, I know I've got sources of Blizzard. I said I mentioned earlier in the show, but mm-hmm. they they just constantly tease me about the roadmap, and they they know what I like, they know what franchises I like, they know what games I like, and and they're just like you're not ready, you are not ready, and they just keep hyping me up, and and it's driving me crazy because I don't know the full roadmap anymore. I did for a while, and then the games came out and whatever, but now now I'm sort of in the dark again, and it's just like man, they they just keep teasing me, man, they keep teasing me, and I just. I just keep wondering, like, how many of these games are going to be full-blown multi-platforms? But how many of them could also be exclusive? How many of them could drive Xbox hardware sales? You know, um, because or PC Game Pass, right? With Blizzard, right? Or PC Game Pass, yeah. It's because one of the one of the missing pieces of the Xbox puzzle has been like desirable first-party exclusives, and Microsoft has said, like, yeah, we're gonna a lot of these games will be multi-platform still. But that doesn't necessarily include games that have never been on PlayStation. Like, I think Rand said before, you were wondering if Odyssey, for example, if they cancel the PlayStation version and just keep that as exclusive, you know, um, it's possible. Definitely possible. Um, I personally don't think they will, but it's just an example, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's just a crazy amount of excitement on the way. Yeah, and we don't even know what these like some of these studios are like Crowbill's Crowbill's tweet is like really amazing when you look at all the franchises and the IPs and the stuff that we've know that's been announced and then there's like a good handful of games that you Jez have the reason why I've kind of like reported on the rumors you've kind of dug up or heard about these games that are still have never been officially announced they still have a word project in them in front of them or they're they're a game like this that you've reported on over the past couple of years so the roadmap looking forward for xbox um there could be four big games in 2024 and then after that Rand and i like to laugh that the really big ones come after that year and then there's that's when we'll also hear about the announced games. Like, is there a monster hunter style game? Is there a Wu Tang clan game? Is that going to be good or not? Is there, um, I like, what, game like, like project, project dragon that became project fantasy. Yes. Like stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff like that. Look, that hasn't even been announced and we can only hope based on what the studios have done previously, that those would be really cool. You and I ran, we're talking about, is contraband going to be any good? Well, like Jess Avalanche had some, hasn't. Jess had some info about contraband today. 
Oh, can you uh, reset it briefly for me? I was sitting <laughs> playing Cyberpunk. Incredibly, <laughs> incredibly hardcore reporting, but I've confirmed that the game's still in development. <laughs> so, it hasn't been yeah, canceled. yeah. But I yeah, mean, when do you yeah, think the they thing, would like, be ready to show it? it. Oh you... God, I don't know. I don't know. You, I think that game must have run into hard, hard, full bore issues during the pandemic because the original, the original schematic for the game suggested that it was like you know they were gunning for a, a twenty twenty one launch, you know. But that was when the mm -hmm. game was first commissioned, you know. We know timelines always slip, and the, obviously the game was commissioned before pandemic happened. So they didn't know. They didn't know it was com that, They didn't know it was coming down the pipeline. But um, I would hope that we could at least see it next year, maybe launching, maybe later in 2024 or 2025, maybe. But again, that's a total prediction. Like, the game might have been completely refactored. Like, my impression of the game previously was it was a, ve it was a vehicular game. It was, like, purely vehicular and, and that it wasn't shooter-heavy and the combat revolved around disabling the enemy's vehicles rather than killing people but maybe they were just like actually we should expand this and just make it a shooter or something i have but no idea we kind of does it still take them. does it still take place in the 70s like the early 70s in something a like that, yeah. in a mediterranean like locale like a fictional it's not meds uh, right so it's south asia i think south, oh, south asia, asia. okay fictional fictional so it takes place where gaz is from <laughs> uh, yeah I, I don't know it's, it's like i think it's supposed to be like a sort of indonesian kind of yeah island so, philippines something like that and it's, it's sort of like a a military corporate dictatorship or something over the island that you you play a smuggler you, you play which a smuggler, is very just it's cause a, yeah um, it's just causey uh it's, but it's, it's online it's online social hub kind of thing multiplayer from what i understand yeah it's so nice to look down and see that big, gigantic 100K subs under mm. Rand's name right now. Shout out to Rand for that. The thing <laughs> that excites me about Contraband, Jez, is that it it doesn't rely on modern tech to to have the gizmos and gadgets thing like you get in like when you play a heist in, in a GTA Online, like you're on your mobile phone and you're trying to hack something and, and then you have C CCTV cameras and, and all of this way to, to get the law enforcement after you. Like, I like the idea of having an organic old style um, muscle car like cop chase, like in the old movies that were out when my parents were <laughs> watching movies. So I think it could be really cool and Rand and I were just talking about how I don't think Just Cause 4 is a very good game. Or, or Just Cause 4 is not a good game at all. Just Cause 3 is not all that great. But Rage 2 is kind of brilliant in its own way. And that's the games that this part of Avalanche worked on as far as we know. So Yeah, I, I mean, Avalanche, obviously, they know vehicular combat. I think that this pitch revolved around vehicular combat. And I'm sure, I, rem I don't have the document anymore, but... I'm sure I remember reading things about the gr grappling hook and, and, you know, being able to grapple onto the people's vehicles, you know, just cause kind of stuff. And presumably they had a lot of this tech already in place, potentially. Um, but I, I don't know the status of the project. Yo. But yeah, it's, mm. it's, it's one, of many, one of many games beyond ABK that we still potentially have to look forward to. Yo, this email I just got, though. Oh, what this is it? Email. I just got a UPS ship notification tracking number for my silver play button. It's been oh, shipped. It's been, it's been shipped, and they said the estimated delivery is the seventeenth, so next week. Half of that's mine, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got it. A little, a little, you a little sliver it. of it. You, a little sliver you of got it. it. You gotta saw it in saw a quarter off with a hacksaw or something. Yeah. To no, I actually asked the postman to <laughs> to scribble your name in the bottom with a, his pocket knife, so at least you had some representation there. Is but, it uh, is it, it actually silver? Yeah, uh, like actually it's like silver? brushed aluminum. It's brushed aluminum with the play button is recessed in with like a with a mirror, a silvery mirror that's completely reflective. You mean and aluminium, then, right? Yes, I, yes. Actually, I do mean aluminium. Thank you. Uh, aluminium. I, 
I, I actually aluminum. do use the word aluminium more than I do uh, aluminum now because of people like you and Gaz and other people I talk to on Where Xbox. Where is Gaz? Where is septic sauce? He, is he building a sauce. It, video? He was not feeling well because oh. I told him he should go live, and yeah, he wasn't feeling well. But he had used up what remaining energy he had to fight off uh, angry uh, PlayStation fans on yeah, Twitter. You know, Je- <laughs> Col- he, he, Gaz is always, always fighting them off. Uh, mm-hmm. But when you circle it back around to the ABK stuff, Colt, um, yeah, what is what is your hope that they do with? Some of the studios on COD, because there's been debate back and forth about, hey, do we do COD every year? Because we know they, Activision came out and said they, they have their plans in stone for Call of Duty from 2020, between now and 2027. What would you like to see them do uh, with all those studios like Beanox and High Moon mm-hmm. and Toys for Bob, all those ones still working on the Call of Duty machine? Do you think they need to keep it the way it is? Or would you like to see some of them like freed from the shackles to make other experiences? Um, I honestly think they can't keep it the way it is now that they're built into the, the, uh, like the method of how Xbox wants to provide things for game pass. So I have a three prong approach for Activision blizzard. Uh, and this is part of the part of this is my preference, but I think those studios do need to be able to, some of them do need to be able to go out and make something that they want to make like Beanox. I made a joke in my video this morning that Beanox should not be relegated to make trees in every call of duty game, you know, and it's just a joke. I don't know what Beanox does for them, but I want something Beanox, like Prototype. Um, Beanox completely rebranded today. I did see that. Did you yeah. guys see this? I did see that. Yeah. Re- oh, they, they rebranded. Did? I got a new logo, a new website rebranded. And they were like, this is the, the new identity for our studio. As if to imply that they are going in a different direction. So yeah. I, I would not be surprised. So I don't think prototypes going to come back, but I want them to make some type of game, some open world sandbox game. One, um, because radical entertainment's like reduced down to like 50 people. Um, the other thing I want them to do is I want high moon studios to go back and either make a new transformer Cybertron game or to do something. Oh my gosh, this would be amazing. Make a game like that, but do Ninja Turtles, like just some franchise cool game, the way that they can do something. Um, that's what I want them to do. I want them to work on, bring back a couple of franchises. And then the third one is make something new. And I, and I think they have to, I think at this point, I don't think that Phil and Matt booty or or part of that team is going to definitely not going to tell them what they should do, but I think it's going to be strongly recommended. Like if you guys are creating new stuff, this is what we want to do. We want a few great big games coming out every year on Game Pass. And if you guys are going to be a part of that, get out there and make what you've been wanting to make instead of being the guys that put the bark on the trees in Call of Duty. So, well, I think, yeah. um, I think, uh, I think it was Obsidian that said this that when they were acquired, Microsoft basically said to him, "Look, make. We want you to make your dream game." And mm-hmm. I kind of, I'm kind of hoping that they'll extend that to the Activision studios. I mean, obviously, Call of Duty has a thousand developers working on it at any one Three thousand, I think, yeah. isn't is, I think the number they said right recently. Three thousand people. Three thousand. Oh, okay. Three thousand well, working on all the Call of Duty games. Yeah. That's no, absolutely insane. And it's it's like yeah, Call of Duty is a juggernaut, and it's one of the reasons Microsoft Microsoft purchased Call of Duty in the first place, Activision, and Activision in the first yeah. place. Was was um was the juggernaut that is Call of Duty, but you know in a Game Pass world, is it not more sensical to have you know maybe a more frequent cadence of releases, mm-hmm. maybe smaller games even? I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean it's going to be interesting to see how all that shakes out. You know, do you think? Okay, this is for both of you guys. There's a lot of back compat stuff that we mentioned, right? Um, mm-hmm. There's Wolverine game uh, that Raven made. There's some even some Spider-Man games uh, that Activision published, and some other stuff uh, that ABK has uh, that you know it's it's not back compat. And there's been rumors that they went back and did some, but um, how likely do you think it is that they went and be like, okay, we can do Wolverine? And then they went to Disney and be like, can we get the license to to get these Spider-Man games? and Because Wolver- they seemed like they have a good relationship with Lucas now, right? With the Sea of, Thie- with sea of Thieves stuff, with, you know, the mm-hmm. Bethesda stuff. Like, is that something people m- might expect? Or would would you get really excited if they're like, all right, 
back and pack game pass the old Activision Spider-Man games and the Wolverine game. Would that be cool? Is that something that people would want, you think? Yeah, because there's a couple of Spider-Man games that came out on 360 that are universally loved, like Spider-Man 2099, and there was a Shattered Dimensions. Yeah, Web of Shadows. Uh, Spider-Man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Web of Shadows, and uh, if I'm getting those right, but there are a couple of Spider-Man games that just aren't very good. They're like in the low 70s uh, for review scores, and they just weren't that great. So that back and pass stuff, I don't know how licensing works. We've, You know, we've talked to people in the back and pat team, like when Bill Stilwell was there, who said that like these licenses were literally written on a napkin back in the day because they didn't, they were so used to a game having like a five year shelf life. And then the console goes in the garbage. Um, now that's all changed. But Jez, I quoted Jez in my video this morning, how Jez said, expect like a whole bevy of, what was the word you used? A whole, what was the word you used Jez on Twitter? Uh, a whole ream. A ream was, I think, what you said. A, a whole ream? ream of games. Something like that. that. I didn't say ream. You said I just ream. said some. I said some. It, it, no, that, I actually have the quote. It was, I just I just love the way you write. I can't remember what it was. You, you, you were talking about how, how there was all these games that were going to come to Game Pass. But um, there's a whole bunch of, where is it? It's right here. Uh, beyond Call of Duty, there are dozens, maybe hundreds of legacy titles Microsoft and oh, Activision yeah, yeah, yeah. can throw into Game Pass. From Spyro to StarCraft, Microsoft is set to gain reams of highly visible, <laughs> memorable, and nostalgic <laughs> franchises, many of which are dormant and ripe for revival. Well, let, how good does that sound? I mean, he's, he's, a, he's a writer. He's a blogger. <laughs> he's a writer. Reams. Like, did I write that in the article? That's what oh, you, you wrote oh, on Twitter. That was you, you didn't oh, even, well, I'm sure you wrote it in your article as well, but like when I read that, I could hear oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, but yeah, that I mean I wanted you guys to talk about that briefly because you know the Activision team said, Hey, 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 we're just, we know we've been hearing you guys, we're not gonna put Diablo 4 and Call of Duty and Game Pass this year, but soon. And then kind of your response, Jez, was we could probably expect a lot of older titles to just dump well, yeah, into Jez, Game Pass. Jez thinks they're gonna they're gonna string it along. Jez thinks it's like and I, I think I, they could string it they along. Could. I have and no I, clue. I feel like But it just makes sense to me. I feel like it they're probably they'll probably have a drop this upcoming week, right? Maybe some back and pat stuff that they worked on, maybe some other stuff, but I don't like. I think anybody. This I could be wrong, but I think anybody expecting like here's all the games we can put in a game pass. And let's just say there's forty of them. All right, they're all in. I don't think that's going to be the case. I think they might even do something like theme months, where it's like, oh, it's 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 January. Here's all the the crash games. Oh, it's, it's crash month. It's February. Here's all the Diablo games from Diablo two to Diablo three and Diablo four. Oh, it's sense. it's like March. Or, oh, here's here's some or, Call of Duty. You know what I mean? Like, or they could do something similar where they say, you know, here's January. Here's a Crash game. Here's a old COD game. They give you like the uh, they give you like the the plate, like the buffet plate, and then the next month you get a different Crash game with a different Call of Duty game. Like, I I do think Jess's idea of them kind of instead of dumping twenty games in at once like Bethesda did, maybe they do like just put five in this month and five in the next month. And they give yourself a whole entire year until everything starts cranking in. Yeah. Or maybe I would think they would use it to like fill some of the gaps and maybe their game pass uh, offerings for the following year. Right. Cause sometimes they have a lot of games and sometimes they don't and games get delayed. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, stalker two supposed to be, God, it was supposed to be two years ago. It's supposed to be this year. Uh, it's supposed to be next year. Uh, like replaced, um, there was even like that one game they showed at E3 last year, uh, Flintlock, another game that got delayed, right? So you could That's sort of... That's another year, I, I bet. About that. So it's I like there's games that. that they were expecting to come and that didn't come, and sometimes that makes your your Game Pass months a little bit lighter, and then sometimes it makes it ridiculous, like September was, where it was like, uh, here's Starfield and Lies of P and Payday and Party Animals and Sea of Stars... Because it just ended up like all those games kind of just get delayed and they're oh now they all need to come out and they're all, you know, kind of condensed in this one month when mm -hmm. it was like, oh, well, we actually kind of want it more spread out. Like uh, City Skylines was supposed to come out this year for Xbox and Game Pass. 
But now it's coming I out next that was year. Delayed, and now I'm annoyed. Now you're really annoyed, but you can still play it on PC in the Windows Store. So it's like I think maybe they'll they'll maybe hold some stuff and they'll and they'll kind of fill the gaps in the Game Pass stuff next year alongside like newer games or even the first party stuff and being like. So it looks fuller. It's like, oh, here's Hellblade 2 and, uh, you know, a couple other stuff. And here's, you know, this game and some other... Because there's a lot. And I don't think you necessarily need to burn burn those. You, I, I don't know how people actually feel about that. Do they want to, like, turn on their Xbox and being like, here's the 50 ABK games, all the old Call of Duties and any of the new ones they can contractually put, you know, put on plus the Spyro games, plus the, you know, the Diablo. Like, do they want everything all at once? Or would people be fine with them, you know, basically kind of dropping them put, month put, by um, month? I don't know. Put a poll in the chat. Okay. Ask people I, if they would prefer everything all at once or if they should stagger that shit. How would you... I think... Yeah, while he's writing that, I'll say I think people would probably, if they think about it, they would rather have that staggered out a little bit so it's more manageable because you drop all those games on, you know you, you'll you never get to them. And Xbox does have uh, the next four to five months where we don't know what's coming out. Like, is Avowed or Hellblade going to be the early spring game? So as, as well as these back and pat titles, like, are they ready to go? Are they... Um, are they going to have some that they'll have the back of team person, you know, have them work on those like, Hey, let's get these, let's get the agreements in order. So those might take a while. So I think staggered might be the only solution. Yeah. Pulls up and I'll vote here. Pulls up and chat. We have, how would you prefer ABK? How would you prefer Xbox to drop the ABK games on game pass all at once or uh, monthly, monthly drops? Cause I, I, I'm sure they're thinking about it or have thought about it. Um, Jez's backlog is starting to sweat when, when, when you talk about that. Yeah, well, Jez, yeah. Jez, Jez is also supposed to complete... You know, I gave I gave Jez like eight months to complete Persona 5, and he's not oh, going to... Oh, come on. I mean... Come on, bro. Colt, what do you, I mean, what do you say to that? I mean, Jez plays oh, I, a lot of games. I, 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 say, like, I say good. Oh, yes, yeah, good. You don't care about I Persona. Started, I, try, um, I tried to play Persona, and I was like, huh? <laughs> uh, and one of my really good friends, it's his favorite game ever, and I'm like, hey, we can still be friends. Um, I'll play something else. <laughs> I uh, there's just it's just a oh, game sometimes man. that just don't jive. You know, they just don't work for you. It's fine. Well, someone suggested I I put the I turn up the difficulty because I'm finding it like really easy at the moment, and I forgot that you can manipulate the difficulty. So it's so easy that it's brainless and it's not it's not engaging me right now. But like mm. I also started a new StarCraft remastered save today. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> And uh, I start. I reinstalled Battlefield 2042. I'm playing that, and there's a new Overwatch season coming, and Diablo season, World of Warcraft season. Oh, uh, hey, while while I have your ear, um, I am absolutely loving my second playthrough of Sty- of Cyberpunk. Uh, I had 162 hours on my <sighs> playthrough at launch, right? And and since it's been almost three years or whatever, I'm like, oh man, a lot of this just feels so. Fre- like half of it's kind of fresh in my mind uh or it's like fresh to me you got so much heat mm. a couple weeks ago for saying that it was always great and when i saw that tweet i'm like absolutely like the the game was always it wasn't in, you know incredible miracle but man it was such a great game and i always thought it was great and when you said it was people- to be honest cyberpunk was always great and then people were like <laughs> Yeah, pe- people were triggered, right? Because they want to feel like they were part of the game's revival. And I'm just yeah. like, you never liked Cyberpunk. Like, y- they didn't you just... play it. The yeah, angry like, people it's hardly didn't. hardly different, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot. I mean, the, yeah, a lot, a lot has changed. A lot has improved. But the underlying story and the underlying delivery of the story, that has not really changed. You know, and it's not like they've, they've completely reworked any of the dungeons or the minute to minute gameplay. They've improved the combat a lot, which is great, but it wasn't bad anyway. Like, I played, no, it wasn't. I played the game as a netrunner and I loved every damn second of it. And by the end, I felt like a hacking god. You know, they've added a lot of cool stuff, which I appreciate. You melted but, people with your yeah. with your chips more than you actually shot your firearms. I never, I n- barely used my gun, man. I just hid in the corner. And the guns are everyone. so fun too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And like the cars yeah. still drive like they weigh four ounces, but the whole vibe of the game is so great. And I was 
given Rance such also- a hard time because he doesn't have time to start it now. He'll start it next month. I'm like, but well, I'm want, starting December. I want to, December is what I'm yeah, and I'm like, I want you to be talking about it now while I'm talking about it. We can hold hands and all that stuff. But yeah, it's great. I, I just want to yeah. bring that up quickly. Rand is um. Rand is weird because usually he's a trending gamer. He only plays the trending games. Oh, like, yeah, he's, he's a cloud chaser. Excuse yeah, he's a cloud me? Chaser, totally. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to, he's, he's playing like Cocoon and stuff, and he's like, uh-huh. oh, i got to play Cocoon because it's my artistic game, which shows how, shows how art, artifact I am, you know, mm-hmm. and how, how, how intellectual I am. I play these artistic puzzle games. That's Rand, like being an intellectual. I read books. Who reads books in 2023, man? Mm. Rand, uh, Rand Al Intellectual. We have a <laughs> we had another party crasher. Oh no. More yeah. party crashes. More party crashes. It no, it's special it's Nick. Special. Rand, I'm just kidding when I said oh you're a cloud God, chaser. Special Nick. I mean, hold on. Special gotta... Nick, first appearance on Xbox Two. You might have to give him voice permissions. Yeah, uh hold on. Let me see. Or or don't. Or don't. I could we I'm could just, just, I'm just we, kidding. We could just make fun of him right here and now. Hold on. Let me let me <laughs> Uh, the beer on. baron goes. Rand only plays Raid Shadow Legends. Oh, that's no. not true. What's uh? Can I? Can I? Can I? Oh, is, can he? Is that? Is he here? Good day. There we go. Good day, mate. Yeah, I'm here. There you are. You're Special a little low. Nick, I'm gonna, I'm first gonna... Xbox Two appearance. Now, I, now listen. I forced my way on here because I saw Cult and I got told that you guys don't have guests on the main podcast. <laughs> well, sometimes so... we do and sometimes we don't. Yeah, we, we do when Rand's There's... being chaotic. Yeah, and I am chaos Rand today. And you did say, hey, I want to jump in for a few, just like Colt. I, I texted Colt, I'm like, if you want to jump yes. in, you can. So apparently you got something you want to say, or I don't know. What's, what's going on, Nick? Yeah, let's uh, hear it, Nick. I just, I just jumped on because I felt slighted by the fact that I saw Colt on here, and I never get oh, on here. Oh, so, so, okay. <laughs> Well, you're here now, so now you can leave, and I can boot you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I won't be on long. I've actually got to take my son to basketball. I just want yeah, to what, jump in for two seconds. What time seconds. is it? What time is it over Give there for you? It is twenty to nine in the morning. Mm. Oh, you guys use metric time over there. I forgot about that. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> hey, twenty to nine. You didn't read out. Hey, Nick, out Nick, 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 Nick. Yes, yes, yes. Nick, give us, give us your little uh, speech, like uh, how you're feeling about ABK. You've got he doesn't here, give here. a There's... shit. Nick only Nick plays is, Nintendo Nick games. <laughs> Nick is a host of an Xbox <laughs> podcast who doesn't care about Xbox whatsoever. I mean, come on. <laughs> all, Tell me all online. I care about, all I care about, and you didn't even read out my super chat. I, so I, I, I have so many. I, I haven't. I, I still have dollars. so many. I have to get through. It will be read out. Yeah, eventually. It wasn't even that I'm good anyway. Read out. I'm gonna I'm read out kidding. my own super chat. Okay. Read out my own. Super Two Australian dollars. That's massive for me. So it's like 50 cents? It's okay. It's time for X-Men Origins Wolverine on Back Compat. That is oh. the only thing I care about. Mm. X-Men Origins Wolverine? Wolverine. Isn't that a 360 yes. game? That, that's the game I literally yes. mentioned to you guys. I was like, the Wolverine game that Raven made? Yeah, uh, but we only oh, listen when old. Nick says it. Yeah, that's true. Because he's a good guesser. Old. He is a good guest. Oh, Pat, that's what I want. I want it on back ASAP. Uh, if Jason Ronald's listening, I <laughs> aim on it. Get to it. Didn't Activision have the Deadpool game as well? They did. Yeah, yes. A, yeah. Uh, yeah. Deadpool, Deadpool had an Xbox One port, and uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 1 and 2 got Xbox One ports, but they have obviously did. Yeah. So, honestly, what are you waiting for next? Because in the Discord, you're all about Sega. Sega. You want Sega, Sega, Sega. Sega. woo, so, Sega. Sega. So, do you think how like I mean, is that a pie in the sky situation for Xbox, or is that something that you think I, will happen? I, I think it'll happen. Yeah. I don't know when, but I, I think it'll definitely happen. Mm. I'd also like them to pry Crystal and the Idos away from friggin'. I think everybody wants Bracer. that to happen. Well, most people, God. I would imagine. Look at everyone yeah. being so rude to me in the chat. Are they? Are they being rude to me? <laughs> well, we we no, I, they're, they're not being. They're rude. Tro- They're mostly trolling <laughs> Australia, I think. Yeah, and they're three dollars fifty U.S. U- U.S. cents or whatever it is, right? 
Uh, poor <laughs> yes. Oh, I, actually, I did um, mention you. I did mention on the show earlier when I was going through the yeah. epic story of the ABK thing, and I was like, and then you even had Special Nick come out two weeks before the the acquisition, saying that Xbox would never buy ABK. And I was like, and oh, stop. And I'm like, he'll say now that he knew the whole time they were buying them, but you know, it's just a good guess or whatever. Famous. Uh, oh, well, no, I did. I, oh, it's, all right. it's, all, it's too long a story. I'll, I'll show you in DMs. Uh, you've shown it's too me long DMs. a story. Uh, Am I? Yes, I've seen it. Okay. See, so you, you show so many people your stuff that you just forget no. who you've actually showed it. <laughs> I can't to. remember anything. I yeah. can't remember. Anything. Like I remember. Yeah, like, I remember. The, the, the truth is, all of my info is actually from Nick. Oh, okay. Yes. Is that is that yes. why most same of it's wrong? Colt. Then? Same with Colt. <laughs> Colt's the same. Brand. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I remember. I remember distinctly. There was a. It was an Xbox party chat I was in. It was me, Colt, Zocker, you know the the fraud. Who? Mo- Zocker, the PC gamer. <laughs> Uh, Malaka, right? Uh, yep, he's in the yep. chat. He's in the, he's chat, in the chat. I know he is because I saw him. And you joined, and maybe it was Gaz too. And you were just like, "Bro, I can't yes. wait for a uh, banjo uh, double fine to make their banjo game and stuff." And you were going through all these like games that you know my and we, me and Cole were just like, "What the fuck is Nick talking about?" <laughs> like, uh-huh. Oh yeah, I don't know if you yeah. remember this because you were playing Rocket League, the only game you play on Xbox. Every single day yes. I look. What's Nick doing? Oh, he's playing Rocket League again, as always. Yep. All I play. The ho- Dude, what's the deal? What's hours. the deal with Rocket League removing trading? What's that all? About? I have no idea. I told my son, and he, like, buddy, I'm gonna have to trade you a lot of stuff before they take it away. In December. What, do, what even is trading? I don't even know what it is. And everyone's mad about so- it. Yeah, because right now, when you unlock items in your battle pass or from loot boxes could trade them with other players what for free oh so, yeah just trade oh. them so interesting if, if you've got a if you've got a skin that people like and you don't care about it you can just trade it to someone and you might take a set of wheels off them or a papa or something like that interesting cool. so they're taking it away oh so, yeah so Happy games for you man Happy games what do you think happens next yeah, week, Nick? I asked Colton Jez this. What do you think happens next week? Like, anything? Do they do a roundtable? Do they have Game Pass drops? What type of games? What do you think, ha- if anything at all, happens with ABK stuff next week? I, I don't. You don't know? It'll or? probably be... <laughs> it'll, it'll, it'll probably be... I don't know. Would they do a roundtable with Bobby? Well, Bobby no, is leaving like in January. True. Yes, they, they, might, they might not like how that looks. So, I don't know. I just want a back and pat uh, drop. That's all I want. Do you, do you, do you think we're getting... I know you had said before that we... No, I'd, I'd been told that there was supposed to be one last one. Okay, so there's going to be one more ABK-related back and pat drop. I mean, if you're going to... If it would be the time, it would be it'd be right now, next week. Drop some of those back and pat so. games. You, you, yeah, because, oh. I mean, obviously they've been working on this deal for quite some time. So you think they would, in the background, also be being that too, I think. And I know mm. I shouldn't ask you this because I already know the answer, mm. but what are you excited from the future of Xbox and Activision Blizzard working together? Does anything excite you or are you just waiting for Sega? The only thing that... It, like. There's a lot of IP they can mine. I just don't know if they're going to bother. Like, I would love a new rock and roll racing. I don't think they'll bother doing that. What? Oh. A, what about a blur? No way. That game didn't do. Anything. I know. I'm just saying they also sitting on blur, right? Because that was they Activision. Still, they still own the IP. They own the IP. I mean, I don't know who does, considering uh, Bizarre Creations went uh, defunct after that. That's right. So I would have maybe. I don't know who actually owns it. Maybe it's just dead and gone. I don't know. But it was a cool like, game. It was a cool game. Yeah. If they're not bringing uh, back, if they haven't brought back Project Gotham Racing, why would they bring back Blur? True. Yeah, I I, I do see people saying they want to bring they they Xbox should bring back Project Gotham Racing, but I doubt that'll ever happen. Too. Yeah. You can brand it under Forza. You can like just say Forza Team Presents or Forza Presents Project Gotham Racing or something. Forza Gotham Racing? I don't know, but... Forza Gotham Racing. 
Yeah, one game. bad mother in the chat says, Nick just wants them to put expensive skins in Fortnite and Rocket League. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is definitely... Yeah. Ooh, you, a lot more characters. You could, they imagine could. Imagine if they put Call of Duty skins in mm. Fortnite. <laughs> oh, jeez. I missed your whole talk about the round table. Did you guys talk about when you think that'll happen? Because I saw somebody in the chat saying, it feels weird if Bobby Kotick that's is what, at... Yeah, that's what Nick just said, yeah. Um... I don't. I, why would he be there? Like Satya wasn't at the roundtable for Bethesda. Like, why would he well, need to be there? Well, because technically, Bobby's still head of, he's still CEO of Activision Blizzard, right? Until January. Yeah. So. Uh, and I guess Phil's the CEO, quote unquote, of Xbox. So he was at the roundtable for Bethesda. Like, would they really need him to be there, knowing he's going to leave, or would they put him there as a as a nice, respectful send off, or would they just be there with mm-hmm. Phil? And um, Aaron and they, I don't know who else is prominent uh, that would be there, but maybe they have some of their big studio heads there instead of Bobby. His cousin. There. We'll have Jez's cousin James there. Just oh, God. oh, my gosh. <laughs> that would be it's crazy. The amount of people who yeah. thought that was me. <laughs> That's okay. People think Clint Eastwood's my dad. So He's not. <laughs> seriously, like they people honestly ask me that all the time. Is Clint Eastwood your dad? He's my grandpa. He's your grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you got right. well, you're, guys. You're gonna have a big fun. show tomorrow, go. right? You got a, You got a guest coming. All right. Next. Yeah, next. Gotta go. He's supposed to be. Tom on. Warren. Why does Tom... Tom Warren never come on yeah. Xbox Two, Jazz? Uh, We're the most curious show. We didn't ask him. Yeah, I'm that's sure true. We asked. need to ask him. So now that you've been on, Nick, that means I don't have to invite you to an Xbox Two Plus One because <laughs> me and Jazz were talking about. Having an Xbox oh, Two Plus One with you and John. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever. You still need to have me on one of those. Yeah. Well, would you want it? Would you? Do you want your own episode, or do you want to be combined with Xbox yeah. there, where it's you and John? I don't know. Just me. Just you. You want? Of course, your ego <laughs> would 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 demand it has to be your just you. Yes. Wow, John right, just thrown me. under yeah, the bus. Yeah, thrown under man. the bus. And, not, and of course, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna we're gonna hire we're gonna steal Jesse away from you. I'm gonna we're gonna hire him away from Xbox era. He can be he, Jesse yeah, can be our I producer. I was actually like, I was actually like thinking, man, I should try and poach Jesse for Windows Central. Mmm. Yeah. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Nick doesn't care. He's like, I don't care. I'm the talent on the podcast. I don't. That's all, John. Go figure that stuff out. And you have a when you have a face as nice as mine. Not too many things stress you out. Yeah. Well, nobody can see your face right now, though. That's the beauty of this podcast. Right now. Oh Most dear. Still anyway, love you all very much. I've actually really legitimately got to go. All right. All right. Thanks for dropping have by. Fun. Anyway. Thanks for having me, guys. Love you. Love you. Love you. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Finally, <laughs> no, I'm just, he's great. Yeah, he's great. finally, Nick's funny. Uh, Nick is funny. <laughs> okay, where were we then? I don't know. Rand, how long is the show gonna go on? Because can you a cause... goddamn thing? Oh, <laughs> uh, Rand, remember the soboard? Huh? I love the soboard. Um, you, you always, you Rand. These days, you complain if the podcast goes on for too long for some no, reason. I mean, we still, you, we still, you've, be, you've become. You've become convinced that the algorithm punishes us for going over it does. four hours. It does, yes. I don't know if I don't know if that's accurate. I hundred percent is. I, I look at the numbers, bro. That's why that's why we do in between three to four hours. Anything over four is a death zone. A death death zone. Death zone. YouTube don't recommend is essentially wow, what shit. happens. So yeah. I mean it's only been we're not even at three yet, and we still have Patreon questions eventually to get to. So we're we're on we're on you know, we're on track. Right. We'll be we'll be good. Uh, Cole, is there anything that you, uh, anything else you want to talk about? I mean, oh, you know, you know, since we, you're here, let's talk about the PS5 Slim, shall we? So this would be juicy. Oh PS5 my gosh. Slim. Look, can I, can I segue into that and yeah, say, absolutely segue it. Um, today, <laughs> like I'm, like I'm a captain on a battle. Today we celebrate a great victory. It's been 18 months of pure torture out in the battlefields for ABK, right? So we're all excited. We're we're That's celebrating that. Voice. We were, <laughs> thank you. We were told that this deal would get blocked. We were told that this was horrible consolidation and monopoly, right? And and even Jez said this deal is going to get blocked throughout all of his positive reinforcement, right? Uh huh. Today I see a lot of celebration from Xbox fans. Uh-huh. And I and I made some tweets that were 
I think pretty nice where, where I just said, Hey, this, uh, this, you people have been waiting for this a long time. This is a good thing for gamers. And today more than ever, you know, I get it bad. Cause I, I dish it out. So I have to take it. But today there's been death threats. There's Ooh. been me called horrible derogatory names having to do with people's mental handicaps. There's been just horrible, horrible reactionary knee jerk comments from people that don't love Xbox that have been really, really showing their true colors on social media to Xbox fans. But, um, I think oh. this is us. This is something that it, it's a weird turn as we talk about the PlayStation five. Cause I have to say, they're always about the sales. You know, PlayStation guys, you're like, we have the sales, we have the best games, we, you know, the console is the most popular. And in the midst of this, PlayStation is able to gouge and pass the price hikes on to their loyal fan base because, uh, in some fans' words, Xbox has not provided a proper competition for PlayStation. So now PlayStation can charge however much they want. They have reduced the price of the Slim as we get into it, down 30%, which carries across materials, shipping, retail space, and the materials to create the thing and sell it. They've made it cheaper. They're making more money on it. They're raising the price, and they're passing on the profit margin to themselves by char charging more for this for the to the uh, customer. And Xbox is not in a console um, competition space right now. They're selling consoles, but they've realized, look, the ways to make a lot of great games and make a residual revenue stream on subscription services where everybody else is making great money. And now they've got the slim. And I think that maybe we're seeing a, I know this is kind of a crazy speech, but I think we're seeing a long ass segue too. <laughs> mm. Well, we're because we're going to talk about the PS5 Slim, and I'm we're seeing like a retaliation of their um, displeasure with how PlayStation is pushed forward with this generation, and it's been really bad out there because of decisions that PlayStation is making, not well, Xbox. Right. So I, I it's it's funny to me because you guys' perception or some people's perception of the discourse is completely different to mine because I have ten thousand people blocked. So <laughs> I don't see any of this sort of hardcore toxicity. And I'm really glad for it, frankly, because I can just mm -hmm. imagine how some people are not taking this well. Because <laughs> I, you know, I saw Jeff Grubb's tweet, which is basically like, don't worry, guys, the world isn't ending. And I'm sitting there thinking, damn, what kind of shit is he seeing on his timeline that he felt prompted to make that kind of tweet? It's really bad. It's really, I was talking to one of my friends. I won't sit, I won't name him. But he said that he'd already had two death threats this morning. Um, it's really getting bad. Like, yeah. it's crazy. And and I was talking to my teenage daughter today, and I said, "What? You know, you don't. You're not involved in this stuff. But what do you think causes this?" And she said, "People are just so miserable that they need an escape from their life, and so they jump onto social media and they they act like this console stuff is." the most important thing the, to, to them right well, now. And they you, have to like win it's, some more. It's, it's, it's the same thing as it's, it's the same thing as identity politics. It's, it's essentially a lot of these people have invested a lot of themselves into the brand that rep that they think represents them the most. So when bad yeah. news happens to the brand that they like, it's like bad news is happening to that person for real. Mm -hmm. Right. Or when someone critiques something that you like, when your whole identity is based into it, you feel like it's an attack on yourself. Not an uh -huh. attack on the brand, you feel it's an attack on you. So when, when PlayStation's not doing well, even though they are, like they're selling more than ever, they're making tons of money. Doing really well. You're right. It's, well, it's, 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 that's, a, that's the hilarious point yeah, too. Right? It's, like, it's not even like they're doing badly, but they're doing, they're doing badly in the Twitter discourse. It's, yeah, and the Twitter, and you know, yeah, okay, they don't, they're not acquiring as much, and Xbox is making, I think they just were so used to Xbox being the joke that they could always point to. It was like, huh, it's, you know, Xbox is, is, is shit, and, you know, we're, we're better. Their games are taking a long time. And I'm to on make. the winning they're, team. And now it's like a PlayStation might be doing games as a service, which is something that they made fun of forever. I'm on the winning, winning team. I chose right, and it looks like 
maybe the, some of the oh, and I won't get to play all the games like Bethesda games and maybe some ABK games. So it feels like an, a personal attack to them uh, because they've invested so much of themselves into the brand. Like when people attack Xbox, I don't care because I'm not personally attached to it. Like you know, I have a YouTube channel where I talk about it because I like I I love the brand. I'll talk about it because it, it excites me, but my entire being is not invested into Xbox. So when people make fun of it, I don't care. Slides right off me because uh, you know, I make fun of Wheel of Time. Well, that then we got a problem. Then then we got some issues. <laughs> I, I when people start making making fun of the books, I I get my my eye starts twitching. You know, I start getting like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's different. Um, that's because an Xbox game has never made you tear up and have an emotional. That's not response. true. That's not true. Ori in the blank. Ori in the Will of the Wisps. Oh, that's true. One yeah, of the yes, best that's games true. of last yes. generation. Better than yeah. most of the PlayStation games and all the Nintendo games, but but I haven't played. I know Nintendo you called games. me when you finished. You're like Colt, um, hold me. But so the PS5 Slim because <laughs> it's interesting. Like because Jez had this interesting reaction on Twitter that I want to get to. But basically, they announced the Slim. Kudos to Tom Henderson Henderson for being spot on with the reporting. It didn't come out exactly when that we thought it would. It's coming out in November. Uh, four ninety nine for the the disc drive version. 449 for the digital version so an increase of 50 bucks from the previous digital version and if you want the vertical stand that came with the original consoles they have a new one because the new console is like slimmer and it's also shorter uh it's 30 dollars for the vertical stand and it's going to repl- once all the old ps5s are sold through they'll eventually okay this is just a new ps5 and now we have to take like Tom Henderson's reporting about the PS5 Pro next year because he's been right on the on the mark with this stuff. So uh, a lot of people are like, "Yo, you're raising the price of the digital edition because there was there was a worry that Sony would come in here and undercut and basically be like regular the, the PS5 Slim's three ninety nine and the, the 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 PS5 like Slim or the PS5 Digital Edition would be three fifty competing right against the the uh, Xbox Series S. But now that they didn't drop price, and in fact, they raised the price, and they're selling the, um, you know, the uh, the stand for money this time. Uh, Jez had this take on Twitter that was basically, oh, they must not see Series S and Microsoft as a, a threat. Which, there might be some truth there, but I think it more, I think what is really going on here is Sony, if you look at the things they've done recently, by increasing the prices of their subscription service, uh, all tiers, and now increasing the price of the console and selling this extra thing for more, I think they're trying to squeeze every last single drop from people as they possibly can to generate more revenue because they're not they're not going to grow their subscribers with that price grow uh, that that price uh, increase but they will draw more revenue right because they're increasing mm-hmm. it so much and now it's like okay with this you're going to be making more money cuz the the consoles are going to cost less so you're going to make more money on each console sold and you're also selling a digital disk drive for 80 so if you want to get the digital version with the disk drive eventually down the road that'll actually cost you 520 which is more than what the regular one with the disk drive costs i think sony is just basically looking at it and they're saying we are going to extract as much money from the stone and the stone being <clears throat> the playstation user base as much mm-hmm. as we can it's not so much that they view Xbox is well, not competition because they do that. and they're not really worried about Xbox outselling them in the world because Xbox will never because they're certainly not going to in like Germany and all those places. It could become way more competitive in the future when Xbox does the marketing for ABK in the US and stuff. I think it's all about revenue for Sony. If you look at some of the recent stuff they've done, uh, not so much that like they're just like screw Xbox. They're they're nothing. It's that Sony wants more revenue because they need to show more growth to their investors, and this is well, this one is of the thing. ways to I, get it. I, yeah, I don't. But the thing is, like, if if Xbox was a threat, they would have to take that shit into consideration when looking to grow revenue, because if they sort of keep incrementally increasing stuff and sort of trying to get their user base used to this concept of higher prices, which you know Sony's a pioneer of bumping up prices and rightfully so you know if if people pay for it then that's what you got to do it's a responsible business decision you're you know publicly traded company you're responsible to your shareholders that's the that's the whole point 
you know. So it's a responsible thing to do, but I feel like Microsoft clearly does not think the same way. They let Sony do that first, and then they come in after being like, oh, yeah, well, Sony doing it, then, you know, it's okay that we can do it, you know. And I think that 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 definitely reflects the 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 market reality that PlayStation can can do that kind of stuff and Xbox can't. I don't think they see Xbox as competition. I really don't. Mm. I mean, it's they're di- they're diverging more and more as businesses, and I think like they kind of like their thought process is Xbox is evolving into being a publisher platform company with a little bit of hardware on the side, and we hope. I mean. Despite the public rhetoric between Jim Ryan and whatever, I think they're 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 thinking like we'll have a good relationship with Microsoft for publishing games on our platform, and it shouldn't necessarily impact our hardware business because a lot of these games are going to be multi-platform. And so Microsoft, the business model of Diablo and Call of Duty and all that kind of stuff, the long-term business model and the long-term viability of these games, they've they've factored in PlayStation as a console as a as an endpoint. They can't just stop supporting PlayStation because the, the business model that they've they've established for themselves depends on that install base. So I think they're, you know, they're not worried about Xbox's hardware ambitions or well, lack thereof. And it's vice versa. Like, they, they can't sell Call of Duty without PlayStation because they're going to sell a ton of copies there and take the revenue from it. But PlayStation also can't live without Call of Duty being sold for free uh, for them. You know, they don't have to, they just... They don't have to pay for that development of that game. They just get all that money for all the people who play on the PlayStation platform, which is really popular. So when you say they're they're very divergent in how they do their business model, but we see them sort of kind of follow each other, and especially with PlayStation, where they just announced, or there's a rumor today that they're working up tra- a trophy system on PC for PlayStation. So as Xbox diversifies their ecosystem and makes it bigger and says, Hey, as long as you buy your games or rent them from us, like we're good. Like we want you to play on the ROG ally or, or the steam deck or your mom's laptop or Zocker's $7,000 PC. And that's how Xbox is. This is our ecosystem. We're like you said, we, we make great games and we also dabble in the hardware. PlayStation is kind of diversifying into that realm as well. And I think it's what makes their hardcore fan base upset where they want to have that W that they are on the winning team and the flag they wave says, Hey, we sold the most consoles. We sell the most games. Our consoles the most popular. And Jim Ryan is saying the console is not enough because it is really important for them. Uh, when he looks at Spider-Man can sell up to 30 million in the franchise. And it's like, but we could do another 10 million on PC. Why, why, why do we just leave that money there? And they're not going to leave it there. They're going to diversify. So oh. the whole thing about just fighting one console versus the other, Rand's saying that they're squeezing every last bit out of their consumers on the console. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, I mean, um, if, if you look at what they've done, raising the prices, selling a stand for the, for money this time instead of included, uh, what they've done with the you know ridiculous uh, price increase of their their subscriptions, it just mm-hmm. it just tells me that they're trying to get as much revenue as they possibly can. Sure, they may not view the Series S as competition, but they're like, well, we could sell this at three ninety nine, or we can probably sell the exact same amount at four forty nine, but make more money, right? It's a, it's a, it's at least, I don't know. I mean. I said, I don't have a business degree, but when you look at what they've done, it's all raising prices to increase revenue. I don't, yeah, I also, I don't think it's evil. I think they must have looked at two trajectories and said the same thing, you know. I mean, Xbox increased prices. prices. They increased prices of uh, their Mm -hmm. consoles, and Phil even talked about how they're going to have to raise price of Game Pass again in the future. It's not going to be the same. So it's like these things always happen. I don't know if they'll do the huge jumps that, uh, you know, Xbox did or PlayStation did, but... So now I'm thinking, okay, when you, we've seen Microsoft's documents of like, hey, Series X refresh, and it's coming in at 499 with more storage, you know, Bluetooth and all that stuff. Same thing with the Series S, more storage, better I/O, blah blah blah, 299. Maybe those pricings makes more sense now when you see that PlayStation is basically doing the same exact thing. Because I'm trying to remember in the history of, of, of console slims, revisions, usually those include a price drop with it. And I don't think it's ever included a price increase until this time. 
but obviously there, you know, recessions and uh, parts are more expensive and that may have to play into something. Um, but then it's like, okay, we know that Microsoft most likely isn't doing a mid-gen upgrade. And according to Tom, they are doing it one for PlayStation. But the mm-hmm. worry was that PlayStation 5 Pro would come in next year at four 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 ninety nine, while the Series X Slim would be coming in at the same price, which would make it very odd. But judging from what Sony just did here, if a PS5 Pro is coming next year, it's certainly not going to come in at four ninety nine because I can't imagine Sony dropping the prices of these consoles a hundred dollars in a year, which then would say the PS5 Pro is probably coming in at six hundred. Yeah, and if that's I agree. the case, someone said six fifty, but if, if, yeah, probably five ninety nine. Yeah, if that's the case, then I'm maybe the reason Microsoft's not doing a mid gen refresh is because of pricing. When they looked at it, they realized that they would have to make this thing and to actually give value over uh, of what consumers would want of like, this needs to be this, this much more powerful. But if we're going to do this, that means we're going to have to sell this thing for 600 or $700. It just wasn't in the cards for them. It just wasn't feasible based on, on the pricing. I don't know. I may be completely off on that, and maybe Sony will do aggressive price drops uh, with the PS5 and slot in the PS5 Pro at four ninety nine. But I don't see why they would do aggressive price drops. I don't know. The market yeah. dic- the market dictates to them to either hold hold their price or increase it, and yeah. their I mean, they have their done fan base certainly drops. has been paying. Sorry, they have, they, they have done some price drops in the in, but in certain markets where I think they. They seek to gain the most ground. They did. They did some really aggressive price drops in the UK, um, yeah. the, UK mm-hmm. the UK, for example, uh, and that was specifically to try and take market share. I think they were like, you know, we we send smell blood in the water here. You know, there's a, there's a chance here that we can potentially steal some, you know, swing voters, you know, or whatever you want. I also to call think it. maybe they were trying to get rid of some stock because apparently they had a lot of stock in in the wild as well, right? That they needed mm-hmm. to get rid of before these new systems come out. So what better way to get get rid of them is, oh, to, is to drop price on stuff. So yeah, maybe it's like you look at, cause we asked John Linneman that question and he was just kind of like, you know, hey, we'll see if they do them, but it's like, yeah, maybe Microsoft was just like, look, we already had this issue with the series X where they took a subsidy, you know, judging fr- from the leaks and they even had to put the Series X for uh, like their chips into the cloud because they just couldn't sell the Series X, you know, from the the court documents. It was like, well, if you're also planning on making a better version that would cost more, it's probably it's like, yeah, we I don't know if we can do this because there probably isn't enough people that would buy it at that price point. Because I mean, it's just a fact that Sony, you know, when it comes to consoles, I think there's a bigger audience for PlayStation than there is for Xbox, right? So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, assuming, of course, that the PS5 Pro comes in at, like, 600 Yeah, I, 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 it makes sense now that Mike, well, Microsoft wouldn't do one and is just going to focus on the refreshes to drive costs down on the current versions and increase, you know, like, hey, more storage and stuff and ride out the rest of the gen with that because, you know, I don't know how $600 consoles would sell in this day and age in this market, but... It was just a thought. So the Slim's happening. Can, I, I don't know. Like, um, Can I interview you both about um, the reasoning behind no mid-gen refresh for Xbox? Because Phil's like, we're all about choice. And it's like, well, give me give me the choice to buy a mid-gen. Um, of course, you could buy a PC, but you're not getting an, an upgrade for $600 on PC. I think the issue there is is purely you know logistics in terms of okay we're we really going to ask devs to build a third SKU now yeah, there's when yeah. we, we've got all this all this public all this publicity about the series s being a poor system or whatever you know um it, i think I, increasingly I, I do wonder if the series s was a gamble that hasn't panned out but at the same time i'm thinking like man if they didn't have the series s and they didn't have the series x chips xbox would be even in a worse position right now so you know hindsight's not always 2020 we don't yeah. know you don't know what the situation will be but i do think the series s has probably put them in a situation where it's kind of like well maybe we skip mid-gen upgrades now you know and maybe there's enough people locked into the ecosystem where 
we just focus on the the audience we have and we don't we're not necessarily trying to grind out stealing market share from playstation because it's too expensive too expensive to do that so we focus on growing game pass and enticing people in with the the raw value of our platform over time but we don't try and compete with playstation directly and that's probably why they probably won't do a mid-gen refresh that's just my guess i also think Mm -hmm. it's it's price prohibitive as well because if sony's Mm. gonna sell one at 600 i would assume microsoft for whatever reason sony's able to create the systems and then like maybe lose a, a little bit of money on it, but like really cut the cost on it and start making money on it where M- Microsoft really has this issue where like they lose a lot of money on their consoles. And well, it this takes generation, the, I think, well, even, even I, before, I like I, it took them a long time for the Xbox one, I think to become not, you know, like a, a profitable, like where you sell one and then, you know, well, like, maybe that's because they don't, they don't, sell enough of them you know if they would have sold 40 million in three years maybe they would have been able to turn a profit by cranking out more product and making money off of each of them but you know when you create when you make these partnerships with amd or and all these uh hardware or parts manufacturers like playstation's cranking out two times as many so they're able to get, you know, and, they, and they're able to say, hey, we're going to sell probably about this many and they make a deal and they can get them a little bit cheaper. It must be the way because these consoles are so similar. Why does it sound like Xbox is losing $100 on every console sold? Like kind of Phil kind of said something to that effect. Didn't he, Jez? Yeah, he said he something, said like, something that. like that. Like they were losing, which I think maybe was it the Series S or is it the Series X, like, or or a combination of both of them? They lose about a hundred dollars every time they sell one. So you try to subsidize it with with Game Pass and with game purchases. Um, An accessory so. just has more power there. Yeah, that's why Xbox yeah. sells a new controller every single other week because uh, controllers make money. <laughs> and they're making baby. gangbusters off of it, and that's why there's going to be a new controller with haptics. So everybody who buys all those controllers buys all the that controller, and then all the variations of the colors again with that new controller. If that's a real Brilliant. controller, I will never touch. Any, I don't care how beautiful they are. I'll never touch my other controllers. Bro, if you I get have one a that, whole collection behind you. Uh huh. Yeah, they'll just You'll be just nice have little. To, uh, you know what? You could buy like all the brand new controllers and write it off as a work expense, so you can display them uh, behind you on your shelf that you need them for your. I'll just uh, I'll just get a pry tool and I'll pry off the front of all the cool ones and mm. put it on the <laughs> new haptic <laughs> controllers. <laughs> um. Uh, anyway. Yeah. So. Uh, I do have to read a whole bunch of super chats because there are a bunch we missed, and there's Patreon questions. So um, I don't before know. Before you Cole, do that, Cole can I to... can I say hi? Yeah, I want to say hi and bye to yeah your amazing chat. I, I kind of gave this speech the other day, but I, of course I'm here and I see. I'll kind of repeat it because I see the same people that I see on other shows that I watch and other shows that I get to guest on, or uh, like all these people. You probably know it's the same thing, Jez and. Ran that these people are all hanging out together on everyone's podcast. There's like a sense of community. And thank you for sending me a, a text to say jump in because it's cool to talk to you guys. And Jez and I were yeah. messaging each other last night. I never talked to Jez. I'm like, bro, I never messaged you because I don't want to bug have, you. When because, are you going to have Jez on X and C? Um, I, have to, I would like to do it early, you know, do my show like three hours earlier so he doesn't stay up late. So I, I have to pick a time where I just tell work i need a couple hours off like hey my real That's job just how it guess, is. you know it's funny it's <laughs> yeah it's like it's like i had to do real work today for my real job <laughs> yeah i did i told rand <laughs> yeah i had to do real work dang it um i did i just want to thank you guys for what you do and and i think this is a i'm really happy this turned out the way it did and i think if this deal wouldn't have gone through it would have been a real big gut punch for leadership at xbox and then for the fans i think we kind of would have been pretty bummed out like wondering what the future is like you guys kind of said in the show earlier that maybe this means there are more possibilities like maybe some studio or some something that they can purchase now that they're not completely shut off cut off i think it's really good so i'm happy that we can all celebrate and uh it's good i yeah. really appreciate it well thank you that's what We're i want to in the end of the God damn news cycle. But yeah, dude. It's just the beginning yeah, of the Yeah, and rest cycle. in peace to yeah. Destin Legary's channel as he, he can't report on ABK. <laughs> now he's going to have to go back to talking games. Destin's awesome. Um, I re- Yeah, I really like him too. Yeah, Destin's so. a good guy. Destin he's is really, good. really good. But he Xbox covers so much ABK. Xbox 2 yeah, plus you do. One. Get Get Destin on. 
some of us that covered this ABK stuff, like I, we were all getting tired of it and it's good that it's finally over. And I think I, today I made my last, maybe my last one, but I'm this sure you'll make round, more videos. If this round table thing ends up happening, it's really cool. Like we'll have so much to talk about and yeah, yeah it's good to be excited and let people be excited. It's my speech. Stop trying to stop people from having a big smile on their face. No, I'm going to get out of here. You guys are awesome. Thanks, yeah. for, yes. thanks for dropping by Colt. Thanks so much right. for dropping by, dude. You're awesome. Yeah. Have a good rest of the show, guys. All right. Later, everybody. All right. Uh, damn, special Nick and Cold Eastwood on the same show? Who knows? Yeah, I mean, cool, that, that's kind of it's kind of ridiculous, right? Yeah. We do uh, need to get Destin on XP 2 plus yeah, 1, though. We do. Well, we're also thinking about uh, doing two Xbox 2 plus 1s a month uh, yes. as well. So we'll, 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 get, we'll try to get more people on the show. And we um, are discussing Mikey Barra for ooh, November. Excuse me, Mikey Barra. Yes, Mikey Barra, oh. president of Blizzard. That would be that would be massive. Massive. Going to come on, yeah, XB two plus one in November. So, yeah. Oh man, I we'll see. I hope so. We got Lucas in the super chat. I only want one thing: revive Vicarious Visions. Okay, I mean that would be really interesting. Um, and Vicarious Visions didn't shut down; they just rebranded to Blizzard. Studio three or something. Yeah. I think the team is largely still there. Uh, yeah, it kind of sucked that they they lost their identity, but we'll see yeah. what happens. James Wiseo, thank the sun this video is finally over. And happy birthday, Jazz. Also, how funny is it that Kotick got James James Corden at the event? I guess he says like W star star ERs. I don't know what the wankers I would imagine that's that says. And yeah, yeah. attract each other. I, um, well have a good one, guys. I, I, I heard from a few people about this this James Corden event internally at Blizzard, and they said people were just confused and bemused. I kind of feel like maybe they jumped the gun a little bit. Maybe they they thought the deal was going to close that day, because the way Cote was talking about it, he sort of he, he was talking about like it had closed, and then James Corden corrected him and says, "Oh no, it hasn't closed yet." Which, which you know, says to me, James Corden had been briefed on what he could and couldn't say. Mm, okay. And then he was trying to tell Kotick what he could and couldn't say during the interview. So it was, it was very interesting. So I kind of feel like they already knew it was coming, but they were preparing for when it was fully official or something like that. I mean, that video, yeah. obviously, they didn't turn out in the six hours between the CMA approval and Xbox and the, them closing it. They clearly made that video... Probably sometime last week, right? So. I'm not sure, man. I'm not sure. I kind of, yeah. I don't know if it was live or not. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Either way, James Corden is painfully unfunny. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, uh, we got Silas. Happy birthday, Jez. Can the community start a GoFundMe page so when the news cycle slows down in January, we can send Jez on holiday to spark it? I'd be down for that. Jez on holiday. GoFundMe page so people can fund you to go on vacation so all the news drops again. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I couldn't believe that. That was I landed and it was all like, oh, by the way, there's shit going down. <laughs> I, I was I was freaking out, man. I was like, shit. You're like, damn, my team, my team on this. My team on this. Yeah. yeah, but they were on it. They were on it. They're it on fine. it because you got Sam Tolbert there doing work. Yeah. Uh, Sam Cat Tolbert putting in that them hours. Casual noob gamer says people don't realize that Xbox buying ABK is about leveling the playing field and is good for PlayStation Xbox consumers. Here's to money. I will save. Thank you. Uh, Chris Madon says, do you th two think possibility that they will get the Ultimate Alliance games in Game Pass or even bring the series back in full with the new game? And happy birthday, Jez. That's one of those the license you. issues, right? We talked about Spider-Man games in Back and Pat, the Wolverine game, the, the Ultimate Alliance games, which have been delisted. I, 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 I know they did Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 on Switch. It was a Switch exclusive. I'm not sure if that one's been delisted yet because uh, I don't really follow the Switch that much. But obviously... Ultimate Alliance 1 and 2 and Back and Pat, they can't sell those anymore. So it's like, it's just a question of, do they go and try to get the licenses to be able to offer those in, in Back and Pat for a while? I don't know. I don't know how that's going to play out. I hope so. I, I mean, it would be really cool. Because like, we even had Hasbro people talking about the Transformers games. And like, oh, yeah, you know, because sure. there's the three Back and Pat ones. There's also the Xbox One version remasters. Like there's a, I'll probably just want some cash money. I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do. But maybe they feel like it would be maybe they would expect like you know, I don't know how much the license is, but you put those games on Game Pass, you get a new audience. I don't know. I feel like 
the more the merrier if you can get those games. Um, but maybe it's not worth getting the license. I don't know. Uh, maybe KS- they could license Hasbro's Barbie IP. Oh. And do a Barbie game. Like maybe they could. Uh, Chaos Mike. Ghost Adventures. Uh, hopefully, World of Warcraft will finally come to Xbox. Uh, I'm sure there are people expecting that. Achievement. Should Microsoft condense Exo, BlizzCon, QuakeCon, Minecon into one super big late year event for gamers? Make it a real oh, spectacle for the industry. Uh, oh, man. I think the logistics of that would be nightmarish. Isn't and Minecon going on right now? Minecon, Minecon is happening right now. Yeah, right now. Because I, I think ZX yeah. is. I remember ZX was doing stuff. And there's like a poll. About like yeah, which mob poll. they add for the stuff. Yeah, right? there's a poll every year for the mob vote. Um, has the mob vote ended yet? I don't know. No, I yeah, don't... Minecraft Live is going on right now. No, I think I don't. I don't think they. I don't think they should, and I don't think they will, because I still think they want like Blizzard to have its own identity, and 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 Bethesda to have their own identity in Minecraft. So I think it's actually cool that QuakeCon still happens, and BlizzCon will still happen, and Minecon still happens. Uh, cause it keeps more, more stuff in the news more often instead of just hyper focusing in one event that you, you know, it's really not, it's important, but it's not like super important. So like you know, with Xbox having all these things, they can constantly have news. Cause it's like, Oh, BlizzCon what's happening there. Oh yeah. Whatever does happen there. Guess what? It's Xbox. Oh, QuakeCon, whatever happened is there. Guess what? It's Xbox, right? Like you don't need to condense all that in my opinion. Um, yeah. Uh, Brian Lynn says everything showed wasn't specifically for Xbox. They showed Candy Crush and WoW games that will most likely remain mobile and PC for the foreseeable future. I agree. Silas, could Phil Spencer be considered the most powerful figure in gaming, having all the studios, IP, and hardware initiatives under his watch? Well, I think if you wouldn't wouldn't Xbox with Bethesda and Activision be considered the largest third largest publisher in gaming? Is there anybody, yeah. anybody bigger at this point? I think they are the largest pure publisher. I mean, Sony's still bigger than by revenue. Right, right, um, right. But I mean, if you talk about like... Tencent's also bigger by revenue. But I think in terms of like just being pure prolific, I don't know if there's anyone with as many monthly active users now. Mm. Microsoft had 120 million monthly active users. And ABK has 400 million monthly active users, including King. And I'm not sure if that Microsoft 120 million monthly active users figures. I don't know if that includes everything, like Solitaire, Minecraft, and stuff. I've I've been trying to track down exactly what that means, but I think Tencent might still be bigger. Like Valorant, Valorant and League are just so damn big. And then you've got like all the mobile games, Team Fight Tactics, and stuff like that. Um, but they're damn, they're pretty big. They're at least. They're, they're somewhere like between the top three, I would assume. Uh, JW Universe, thank you for coming, the newest member. Thanaro says, why is it taking Microsoft 20 f- years to fully support Xbox? Because Microsoft didn't care. Uh, Xbox was just kind of like the, ragtan, the, the ragtag uh, band in the corner, the, the redhead stepchild of, of Microsoft. And it was like, oh, cute, you guys are doing that? Okay. It was it was a way to stop originally stop PlayStation from getting into the living room, uh, I believe. Um, but yeah, I mean, it wasn't until Phil, uh, most recently, was able to convince them that they should and that gaming should be a priority. Because to Microsoft, it was Windows and it was Azure and it was like you know uh, like Office and stuff. It wasn't never gaming. Gaming was just a side project. But that's all changed, so which is great. Uh, Munter, Yoshi says, any idea how Xbox's mobile strategy with King will be? Do they push hardcore gaming into mobile or casual gaming onto consoles or try a mix of both? I don't know, um, what they do with that. Uh, is that Super Chat or Patreon? Yeah, Super Chat. We're still doing Super Chats because we, oh, we, we're going to have to really speed, speed these up. So I don't know how they're going to actually do that, uh, at all with the, with the mobile strategy. Um, maybe mm. they try to somehow convert those into Game Pass people, but I'm not sure how. Uh, Andy says, I'm not negative, you're negative, and y'all need cameras before doing a pimple-popping podcast. Well, I'm going to get a camera specifically so you guys can see me <laughs> pop. Well, I don't actually don't have any pimples to pop, but, you know. I think, like, potentially what they do with Game Pass on mobile is they'll do what they do with League of Legends, where it's like you get perks. Mm-hmm. 
So if you subscribe to Game Pass Ultimate, you get characters in Overwatch, maybe. You get, um, I don't know, something like that. We'll see. There's a lot that could do with it. Yeah. If you guys are joining the show, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe if you're new. Selvin Haynes says, Prototype 3, baby, is all I want, baby. Love the show. Oh, and Scalebound, if not mentioned it yet. Sorry, just got in. Was watching Prime Minister Barbos Mia Motley's live stream. Okay. I mean, yeah. I, I wouldn't mind a Prototype 3. Uh, that'd be Part fun. Part of three has to happen, man. Has that'd to. be fun. My name is Mutz. Says Rand, you should look into the game, the Thermitage. I think you'll like it. I'll, I definitely will. Thermitage. Thermitage. Oh, oh yeah, I've, it's uh, it's basically hardcore Pokemon. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Aquaman. No, 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 says, dude, 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 dude. Seriously, it's you should check it out. It's like it's like violent hyper. It's Pokemon with demons, and it's violent. And it's dark mm. and fa- dark fantasy. It looks really good. Looks really good. Genuinely. Aquaman says, uh, Audi's Maxwell versus uh, B&O Portals versus A50. Who wins? I'll go with my A50s. What about you, Jez? The Audi's uh, versus Maxwell what, versus the B&O Portals versus A50s. Oh, it depends, man. It depends, man. Like The, the good thing about the A50 is that you can use the optical in which is good for content creators and streamers. But I think I think on raw audio quality, the the BNO wins. And it's also got ANC that's really good. But then the microphone's terrible. So then maybe you want the Audis Maxwell, which at least has a boom microphone. <laughs> They're all uh, they all have their own their pros and cons at the end of the day. Overall I prefer the A50s, even though I do think the audio is better on the other ones. Um but yeah, pros and cons, man. Pros and cons. Yeah, my name is Mud says, with Disney being pushed to acquire a gaming publisher, do you think it's possible they merge with Sony so Sony has more financial backing? Uh, Doubtful. I don't think so. I mean, probably, we might have to talk about this on the next Xbox too, but <laughs> Disney and EA, Disney supposedly yeah. is being pushed to get into EA or whatever. So Yeah, we'll talk about that next week, maybe. Uh, Backlog Gamer, Jez, please, can you find out if Candy Crush is getting achievements, please? For my missus, of course. Love the show, guys. We love you. It'd be something if it did get achievements. I think that would be cool. I don't know if it will. Jez, you need to find out, he says. Dakado says, do you think they will capitalize on the momentum and look for a publisher for China to make a push into the region? I mean, they've talked about looking into the East. I mean, they talked about India. They've talked about Japan, China. I mean... You know, only they know what they're. I mean, we we only we know for a fact they wanted they were looking to buy Sega. I mean, that's just we know that it's true, right? So, uh, it's it, the thing with China is complicated because of trade wars and 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 all that political stuff. Like we all know what Blizzard 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 has Blizzard had an unceremonious divorce with Netties in China, and you know I, you. Know, there's all that sort of complexity surrounding, you know, I think Microsoft's quite nervous about China and a lot of companies are at the moment, but we'll see. It's obviously a very lucrative market, but we'll see. Uh, Big Afferman says, now that Xbox is done with the Activision deal, will they finally focus on what truly matters by having all of ABK make Scalebound? That's three mentions of Scalebound in this episode. (laughs) Yeah. But he also says, what do you guys think of Sean Layden's tweet on Xbox and ABK? Quote, Believe it or not, acquiring is the easy part. Degree of difficulty, integration greater than acquisition by a factor of 10. I kind of agree. I mean, we've been saying He's that totally forever. Right. We've been saying that the hard work has just begun. You even you even had a tweet about that. Like, now the work begins. Yes, acquiring yeah. is the easy part because it's just an exchange of money for something. But now you have to integrate them into what you're doing. And that's the difficult part. Um, as we've seen with even some of uh, the Bethesda stuff with Redfall, right? They were like, maybe we should have gotten involved earlier, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, it's not just all, you know, sunshine, rainbows, and puppy dogs. Like, there's, honest to God, probably so much work that needs to be done but from Phil and the team and the Malper management at Activision Blizzard. Not to mention, like, Activision Blizzard's reputation with all the lawsuits and stuff. Like, this isn't just going to be super easy. This is going to be difficult, you know? It's going to be really hard. It's going to be an uphill battle. And I know from experience that integrating into a massive corporation is difficult. But furthermore, integrating two massive corporations into each other is probably even more difficult. 
So yeah, this is this is by no means going to be a simple and easy process. They literally delivered my YouTube award right now. I just got the notification. I was supposed to get it next oh, wow. week, and it's I, I have a picture. It's literally sitting at my front porch right now. Oh, nice. I have to go get it after the show. It. No, we got thir- we got we got thirty minutes left. We need then then I'll get it. Parts, man. Nah, nobody steals our my packages. I've never had a package be stolen before, and I say that, and I'm not gonna knock on cross my fingers. Um, we have Inomatic Dreams saying, "Are they going to make ABK games play anywhere?" Also, Xbox buy Capcom Resident Evil for the win. Happy B Day, Jazz. Uh, play I mean, anywhere. I I think they probably should do. I know Microsoft really likes the program, but it's 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 potentially complicated, you know, because they've got they do have games coming to Steam, but obviously Steam games are separate. Yeah, I mean, Starfield um, was playing anywhere, so was Redfall. I'd expect the same yeah, from any of the Activision stuff. They'll be on I, Steam, yeah. but they'll also be on whatever Xbox does. I would imagine. Yeah, they'll be yeah. separate on Steam, but yeah, I think I can see Diablo coming to the Windows Store eventually. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Fantasticals member for 36 months. What a trio. Randall Snore, Colt Sneezewood, and Jez Boredom. Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Love all you guys. Thank you. <laughs> Jez Boredom. Uh, Funchito, do you think Game Pass will come to Steam? Overwatch, Tony Hawk recently came to Steam. Soon Diablo. They already have a huge IP catalog in place on Steam. Maybe? Hmm. I mean, they've talked Maybe? about it, and I think they said Valve's not against the idea of Game Pass coming. So... I suppose it's just working out percentages, who gets how much money, X, Y, Z, and stuff like that. But yeah, it could happen. Uh, Chaos Mice says, would rather go through what games I want to play instead of monthly drops, so all at once. Oh yeah, there's the poll. We gotta get back to. Special Nick, it's time for Xbox Origins Wolverine on BC. Melissa and Alex family, oh my god, congrats on 100k, thank you. Richard Moore, have a pint off me for your birthday, mate, at Jez. Uh, Haran says, happy birthday, Jez. Maybe Rank can finally season his food with all that salt from the pony tears. Oh. <laughs> uh, Crippling Debt says, I pay 1500 for a new phone every like three salt. years. I would adore the option for a high-end console every couple years with trade-in options. I mean, I would too. Igor Bastro says, now if ABK is done, is it time to scale bound? Fourth mention of scale bound today. Uh, Psychonaut says, these PlayStation dudes need help with their mental health. They're losing their minds today. Shout out to Ran, Jez, and Colt. Xbox is the best box. Thank you. So those are all the super chats, Jazz. And we still got Patreon questions. So hit the like button. Rock and roll, baby. But we're gonna have to we're gonna have to steam through these, or we can we can save these for next week. Oh, uh, we'll, we'll, how long have think? we got? Uh, Thirty minutes. We got uh, three twenty three. So we got less than forty minutes. Let's do it. We can do it. Okay. All right. So bringing this up, Joaquin. He's actually used the thing because I told him he has to because I don't have my phone. So he, sometimes he DMs me his question. I'm like, bro, I didn't see it. He goes, Phil mentioned wanting to possibly explore Mech Warrior, Mech Assault games being brought back. In your guys' opinion, who do you think should bring these games back? My answer is give Infinity Ward Mech Assault, which would be akin to Forza Horizon, and give Mech Warrior to Raven, which is more akin to Motorsport. You well, want to know, my, I... you wanna know my honest Sorry, opinion? On. Those games will never come back. That's my yeah, honest I... to God opinion. They won't come back. Well, I mean, Mech, Assault, Mech, Mech Warrior Five is still in development. They they have added like a bunch of they've added a bunch of uh, DLC for it pretty recently, and I think they pretty recently announced a new one. But like BattleTech, which was made by Hairbrain Schemes, they just released Lamplighters League, and the studio has been gutted. Yeah, um, they they pitched Lamplighters. They they pitched BattleTech Two. Which is the same universe as MechWarrior. They pitched BattleTech 2 to Paradox, and Paradox didn't want it. So, um, because Microsoft licenses the IP out to them to make, I think that's probably the f- where the, f- the future of MechWarrior is probably still going to be licensed out to smaller devs and indies and stuff like that um, who are passionate about the tabletop game. I can't see Microsoft doing anything with it personally, but who knows, man? I don't think they ever come back. No. Uh, but I could be wrong. I definitely could be. Elijah Vasquez says, once we're able, which game will be the first out of the back catalog of ABK each of you will play assuming they come to Game Pass? None of them. Singularity. I played Singularity. I mean, I played all the 360 ones. I, you know, if I didn't play it, I didn't want to. I own most of the Xbox One ones. So for me, none of them. It's all about the future I'll, games for me. 
personally. Yeah, it's it's all about trending games for round guys. I keep telling you this. Stop that. But it is not what just because I just beat a cocoon and Assassin's Creed Mirage, and, and you know I, I'm I'm trending gamer and Forza Motorsport and the crew and. Uh, yeah, trending game. Solar bro, Ash. Trending game. No, I just play games as they release, and I'm gonna be. I'm playing Alan Wake Remastered next, and then I'm gonna play Spider Man Two next week, and then I'm gonna play Alan Wake Two the week after, and then maybe RoboCop, and then Call of Duty. Bro, I just play. Mm. I just it's just one one game to the next, man. You know. Uh, well, yeah, I don't know. I but there are a bunch I would try. I would mess around in. I'd mess around in uh, Singularity. I'd mess around in Prototype. If they brought that back, there's quite a lot that I'd try. Well, out. you know, prototype yeah, exists. Like you, I mean, it would okay. Game Pass, sure. Like pro, I maybe I would play prototype too because I don't think I actually own that on the Xbox One. But yeah, mm. Sarah, Sarah one one Kevin with the new PS5 console and price being announced. Have you heard anything about Xbox's holiday pricing plan bundle? Will be? Do you expect them to go aggressive with Series S deals this holiday? Well, they just announced the new Series S bundle. They with, did. Yeah, when it comes with like three months of Game Pass. And a controller and the console itself, I believe, is and it's what's the price on it? Two ninety nine, I think. I can't remember, but let me, let me see if I can bring yeah, it up. Yeah, it's really not quickly. so bad. I mean, three months of Game Pass is great, you know. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. So, I um, I think there will be they'll do Black Friday stuff. I think, and I think if they've got the stock, I can see them being aggressive on the Series X as well. I mean, Sony's got um, obviously Sony's got the Slim out, and there'll be people buying that. Um, I mean, it's called the Xbox Starter Bundle. It has everything you need to play. Uh, it's coming out October 31st for 300. Includes a Series S 512 gigabyte console, three months Game Pass Ultimate membership, and a wireless controller. But I mean, oh. it always comes with the. Is this an extra wireless controller? Uh, I don't know. But I mean, the the image is pretty cool. Uh, but it yeah, pretty cool. That that's what uh, the Starter Bundle. So. Uh, that's their plan. Maybe they'll do price drops as well for like Black Friday and stuff. I mean, they were selling yeah. the Series S for like two fifty uh, last year, I think. So mm-hmm. the difference between last year and this year is Xbox got games. Last year they really didn't. Uh, yeah. Chiefman says since it's we're very different scenario now, very much. Since we're talking about Xbox making a Bat game, la- Batman game last week, I declare three four three is the best studio to do so. Chief and the Bat are pretty similar on the surface. Brawny stoic characters who usually only talk to throw out one-liners i mean 343 already has the grapple hook on lock they can even get steve downs to voice batman now that would be epic Hmm. that isn't a bad idea hmm interesting that that's not a bad idea Eh, is it well actually i don't know i think if you're because batman's all about hand-to-hand melee combat and uh that's not really halo halo's just got like the melee so yeah okay they have the grapple hook and i don't know if you can really compare uh, Steve Downs, Master Chief, to um, the late and great Kevin Conroy of Batman. No, but Kevin Conroy is Kevin Conroy is Batman. For me. No, he is. He is. Like, but, but if but if you're picking a studio, to... it would have to be a studio that's well versed in melee combat. And three four three is not. They're good at three four. They're good at melee combat. Look at the. Um, no, they're not. The, the energy blade, bro. Uh, energy blade and that the hammer thing. No, the gravity. Batman. Hammer would be a Ninja Theory game. Mm. All their games basically feature some form of melee combat. That's yeah. what, That would be my pick. <laughs> like five seconds of melee combat. I mean, no. I mean, you, you, whatever. I'm saying that would be my pick, and I'm sticking with it. Uh, Tommy says, Series S in the news again. Dev talking about the obvious shortcoming and the lack of power again. Still no BG3, and now it seems Lords of the Fallen will suffer on Xbox Series X and S at launch again. When will they finally address this issue? It's absurd people who paid the price, X price who have to suffer because of the way cheaper console. When you buy the S, you shouldn't expect the same quality as X, even if Xbox promised certain things. Have a good weekend. We'll be oh. listening to you guys on the plane tomorrow. Um, yeah, BG. Well, the BG3, they said it would release between September and I think November. And I think me and Jez oh. always said it was going to, we thought it would launch in November after the Game Award nominations because that made the most sense. Um, and the Lords of the Fallen stuff. Uh, was like patch related, I believe. And yeah, I th- like apparently the Lords of the Fallen has already been patched. Um, so well, the thing is, is I know because people. All right, the thing. So like they they 
said, oh, well, the PS5 and PS4 versions are the versions we intended, but Xbox were, were waiting or whatever. And people were like, it was, how, how is this possible? Is it a Series S? Is, is it the market share? When in reality, it's literally Microsoft certification. Microsoft certification process is notoriously slow as hell. They're, they're slower than everybody's. Um, so when, so, that, that's why like devs have to wait for patches and more often for Xbox than they do other platforms. I, I, I almost, I don't want to say I guarantee it, but I think that's the issue Lords of the Fallen fell into was that they submitted the patches for the PC, PS5 and Xbox, and they were just able to get them out on PC and PS5 faster than Xbox was able to, uh, certify them. Now, should mm-hmm. that change? It should, but honestly, this has been the certification has been a problem on Xbox since the 360 days. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know why it's a problem so much for them. I don't know why either. I know they like to, they like to cross every T and dot every I. But I don't know, but it is I, a problem. But I don't know what the I don't know why they take so long in comparison to others. But it it is an mm. issue. Uh, Silas says, which one of you is the better overall gamer? Not just games in your comfort zone, jazz blizzard games, ran trending hipster games, but an overall competence across many genres. Bro, Silas, you know it's me, bro. Come on. Oh, come on. You know it's me. Dude, what are you talking about? Do you even play you know online games me. anymore? You know it's me. Come on. Do you um, even play competitive games anymore? No. What 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 cool competitive what? game is out there to play? Who cares? You play Overwatch. you play easy baby game Overwatch, which basically aims for you and kills people for you. <laughs> Bro, you, know? you wouldn't last five minutes in Overwatch. Man. I'm just saying. You wouldn't. I'm playing Battlefield right now, which is way more hardcore than PUBG or whatever <laughs> game you played. <laughs> just, you've never played just, MOBA. You've never played World of Warcraft. Sure, you never ra- you never raided to a server first. I, ne- I have level. never raided. That is true. I've never raided, but you never you never did a flawless raid in Destiny 2, though. So. Yeah, well, I don't play easy games. Yeah. Destiny's a, a, an easy game for babies. Okay, okay. I don't know. Um, Jez plays more games than me, but he plays the games for like five, ten minutes. You know, I <laughs> I fully savor the steak dinner that's given me. Jez like eats one piece and is like, "Can I go play now?" And then he and he <laughs> this if Jez, do you have ADHD? I don't know. People keep asking me that my whole life. My thought is like the way you constantly are moving from game to game to game makes me think you have ADHD. Like you can't, you can't sit and play one game for long that you, you get bored or whatever and you go do something else. Like my, my, my teachers at school were like, you should get, you should get him tested. Mm -hmm. And then like my last boss was like, you need to get tested. (laughs) Yeah. So maybe, but I also, I just think it's my personality, bro. Don't have to put a label on it. That's true. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I, I, I offended you. Uh, CJ. I'm offended. I'm triggered. He goes, happy Friday, gents. Won't be able to listen live this week, but we'll be listening to you on my holiday to Tenerife. Just wanted to wish Jess the, the happiest of birthdays. <laughs> Tenerife. Uh, Tenerife. The happiest of birthdays, and hopefully today is the end of the ABK Roadshow. Have an amazing weekend. Well, have an amazing holiday. You, buddy. And we will see you, we'll see you next week. Connor Smith says, happy Friday, guys. What a historic day. Jez, happy birthday. And Rain, congrats on the 100K. Can you go into more details about the cloud streaming deal with Ubisoft? Is it just COD or all Activision games? Will these games still come to Game Pass? Keep up the amazing work. So it's all of them. And they can still come to Game Pass, obviously, because Game Pass isn't streaming. The question is, will those games come to xCloud? And that would be... The answer would be yes if Microsoft comes to an agreement or pays for a license from Ubisoft. If they don't, then no, right? That'd be the simple answer. Yeah, I mean, I can't see a scenario where Microsoft wouldn't get the rights to their own games, especially since Ubisoft and Microsoft are obviously partnered up, and they don't want bad blood between each other. I, it's it's <laughs> it's absurd to think that that wouldn't happen. So I think, like, yeah, Ubisoft basically is gonna they'll get the rights to distribute stuff to third parties. But like, maybe you see. Maybe you see these games appear on PlayStation Plus Premium, for example. Would Microsoft have done that? Probably not. But Ubisoft will do that because they want to get as much money as possible. Um, it's it's really funny because Google Stadia could have benefited from this deal. 
Ubisoft and Stadia were very, very close and working very, very closely on cloud stuff. And then Google's like, oh, nah, we, we don't care about cloud anymore. And now with this deal, they could have got everything. They could have got fucking everything, Rand. Mm. But now they're going to get nothing because Phil the Grim Reaper Harrison has killed Stadia like he's killed everything else. Mm. So uh, I don't think it's going to impact our cloud very much. Um, but hopefully Ubisoft makes a bunch of money. The cloud gaming market as a whole grows. And then in 10 years, Microsoft can come back and be like, oh, okay, we'll take those back now. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, Kraken56 say, hey guys, what are you ex- are expecting Xbox to show at the Game Awards? Last year, they showed nothing because they developed a direct, but I think Xbox is just starting to hit the breaking point where they have so much to show. Will we get multiple games or just one if they show something? Will they be bigger sales, or smaller pro- projects? If I'm Xbox, I make a trailer showcasing Bethesda, Xbox, and ABK. And I show that sucker at the Game Awards for everybody watching to remind everybody that they have everything. Like a Game Pass ad with like all the friends. You know, this is Xbox. Similar to the one they did today, but like this is Xbox. Uh, So I do an overall one, right? With ABK, Bethesda, and Xbox. Um, As for like game, um... I mean, I would say Hellblade 2, but that would be its third time at the at the Game Awards, and I don't know if they would do it three times. Because oh, no. I don't know if they do it three times, to be honest with you. Uh, oh, maybe, no. maybe they do Perfect Dark. You know, maybe maybe they show Perfect Dark off. I mean, Matt Booty did say we'd see... Well, he said we'd see Perfect Dark next year, and this would be Booty this year. Time. I don't know. I mean, if they're planning on doing another developer direct, maybe they don't need to have another game, and they can just run, like, an overall, here's Xbox, and then they have a developer direct that showcases the games coming up for the rest of the year oh. in January. I, I don't know. It's different when you have your own stuff, uh, when you have your own events planned. Dude, dude, when you think about it, like Microsoft potentially has thing like, you remember like back in the day, there'd be years where there just wasn't anything worth showing off and you'd get EA yeah. doing events and it'd be like, oh, there's, they literally just talked about the new FIFA and some some random indie game that they're publishing or whatever. But Microsoft's going to have so much stuff. I can't see them ever having a bad show ever again. Um, like, yeah. it's more... There's a lot. There's a lot. Yeah. There's a lot. You know, yeah. the downer of it is that maybe next year, that next year's COD might be in the Xbox show because I'm sure they're going to want to tie Call of Duty and Xbox together. Why right? is that downer? Man? Because like usually those aren't very interesting. Remember, people you hate. Like, no, I thought you liked Call of yeah, Duty campaign. Sure, I do. But we used to, we went through that w- with the 360 and the early Xbox One, where there was COD always in the show, and then PlayStation always had COD in their show for a few years, and people were just like, "Ah, oh, get rid of COD. I want to see newer things, not stupid COD." But COD is so yeah, huge, dude, they would want to tie dude. it to the platform, and you know. Yeah, but now, but now Call of Duty is part of Xbox. That means it's yeah. automatically good now. Oh no! Now, now it means it's automatically card, bad, and it's always been bad. Card, card, good. Card, good, bro. All right. I love card. I've always loved card, man. Card's the best. <laughs> card is absolutely the best game I've ever played in my entire life. Uh, Never we have, say a bad thing about card. We have good old Collingwood saying, "Happy weekend, Rand. Happy birthday, Jez." Just going back to the leaked documents of a few weeks ago, and specifically about the hardware leak. We saw that the future Xbox ecosystem would accommodate handheld devices playing from the cloud, smart TVs, and mobile phones, as well as the standard console and PC. But one thing that I haven't seen anyone discuss is what was not there, virtual reality gaming. There was no VR headset included in the peripherals or controllers displayed. We know that there isn't a short-term future for VR gaming on Xbox. Does the leak mean that there may not be a VR future at all? We should never say never, and VR may feature someday, but on the evidence of the leaked documents, it's not on the roadmap for Xbox. Is this a realistic proposition, think, um, or am I being overly negative? I think I think Microsoft is still in a wait-and-see pattern. They, they're supporting VR. They're working with Meta to bring Game Pass to the MetaQuest and also um, Microsoft Teams to the MetaQuest with their Microsoft Mesh platform. So Microsoft is vaguely keeping their toes dipped into VR, but they don't want to invest in, they don't want to be the ones who have to invest in growing the technology platform. Mm. That's kind of where they're at right now. They're just like, yeah, yeah, we, we, you guys grow it for us and we'll come in later. I can see Xbox publishing games to the Meta store. Microsoft is a major investor in Meta. I think they, are, they own like 
ten percent shares of Meta or something. So Microsoft Microsoft has a pretty they have a vested interest in, in seeing Meta succeed in this space, right? And because of their investment, they potentially have like better connections to um uh sort of be first in the door when it comes to innovations with regards to consumer virtual reality. Microsoft has patents in virtual reality. Um they don't exactly have their own VR games that they make. But I don't I wouldn't say I wouldn't say never. I wouldn't say never. Yeah, but he is but, right. He is right it wasn't in the leaked documents, it wasn't in any wasn't. images. We know that they have some deal with MetaQuest, right? Um, yes. But a Game Pass. That's what I was talking about. Yeah. yeah, I don't I don't think they do anything with, with VR. Not until it blows up, and by then maybe it's too late and they missed a the boat, but you know, part of me thinks whoever is the new head of PlayStation might just come in and just cut PSVR two stuff and just be like, "Now nah, we're done with this." You know what I mean? Because uh, you never know. Like the next head of PlayStation might be like, "Ah, VR is not the future." They look at what how much it's costing and whatever, and they're just like, "No, we're done." Uh, James Wiseau says, "Yo, yo, happy Friday, champs, and a happy birthday to you, Jez." First, just wondering if we're gonna have a community game of the year discussion. I think that would be pretty fun. We'll we'll definitely have a discussion about that when we play all the games, right? Second, do uh-huh. we think Sekiro 2 is likely under this acquisition? Would love an Xbox exclusive from software. I actually said that to my friend earlier today. Uh, that if I'm Xbox, one of the first things I'm doing is I'm on the phone to from software and being like, you guys want to do Sekiro 2? Because I think Activision, they owe the publishing rights to the first game because from software owns the IP Sekiro, right? So yeah. I think we'll see Sekiro on Game Pass. But I'm curious to see if Activision holds the publishing rights for future sequels of Sekiro, right? And mm. if that's the case, if I'm Phil, if I'm Matt Booty, if I'm I- I'm calling them up and be like, you guys want to do Sekiro 2? What, what, how much is it going to cost? Because we've seen that they just announced Sekiro 1, 10 million units sold, right? Um, yeah. Like that, I, that is something I would pursue. If you can get a from software game, you know what I mean. I think I think definitely Sekiro Two is on the cards. Um, I know that Xbox is obviously huge fans of from software. Um, on a personal level, they're, they're pretty they're actually closer than you might think. So I can see that happening for sure. I would love for it to happen. I, I honestly would. Uh, Lazar Wolf said, "Hey guys, congrats on 100K Rand. Jez, please tell me Guitar Hero is coming back and happy birthday." Sounds like the, you have a good, uh, good chance, right, Jez? Good chance. Definitely, definitely seems to be like the the way Kota was talking about it sounded exactly like th- that it was coming back, but in in exactly what form remains to be seen. Because from what I understand, he was also talking about like how you could use a mobile phone controller potentially for Guitar Hero. So one thing I can see them doing is because you know how guitar in Guitar Hero you have like the the four or five buttons on the controller right i can see them doing like a version that runs across like every device and that maybe a version you can play with your phone you know like hold your phone as a fretboard or something like that um i don't know you know we'll we'll, Mm. i'm i'm pretty sure that shit's coming back for sure but it might not be exactly as we remembered it right lee sanders says happy cake day jazz important question for you both get ready what's your favorite cake mine's lemon drizzle I mean, like I like chocolate cake, but I also like lemon meringue pie. Uh, ba- Baker Square used to have like a Reese's Pieces sort of cake, which was like, oh my god, so much cool stuff on there. Um, Man, my um, my girlfriend makes the best cakes I've ever had. Yeah, and I I keep thinking like I should have convinced her to go to baking school or culinary school or something. But she makes these like really just light cakes. I'm I'm like someone who doesn't like heavy sort of dense cakes. And she like she takes like classic cake formulas like your chocolate fudge cake, but then somehow makes them really light. It's amazing. Um, but basically, my favorite cake is anything my girlfriend makes or cheesecake or cheesecake. <laughs> my girlfriend's cheesecake. Yeah. Uh, we have. Let's see here. Uh, uh, we have fantasticals. Hey guys, and happy birthday, Jez. We have like fifteen minutes left. I get increasingly frustrated with all the negativity surrounding Ryan's Starfield. Nervous. A lot of content about the game is filled with the bug compilations that paint a picture of an... Well, my, my, my award's out there. I gotta go grab it. They paint a picture of an unplayable mess, which I find very misrepresentative. The people who compare it to Cyberpunk, a game that almost had three full years of post launch support, isn't fair either. 
It just feels like beating a dead horse at this point. I'm wondering what you guys think is the reason for all this negativity. Is it because it's an exclusive? Is it because people are still salty about Fallout 76? Did the game launch in a year with too many high-profile games? Or is this the usual negativity driving game and phenomenon? Looking forward to today's show. Have a nice weekend. I think you answered your own question. I think it's all those. It's because it's an Xbox exclusive. People are still salty about the last game. You know, Baldur's Gate came out. Uh, Cyber, like, I think also the SEO and Starfield was so high, people were using it to draw clicks. Negativity draws clicks, right? Yeah, I think, like, I think these day in this day and age when there is an opportunity for negativity to create clicks and that the con- there isn't there isn't a hard consensus that something is amazing you know people people can and will offer shit loads of bad faith takes and i think a lot of the takes about starfield are in bad faith especially the headlines and especially some of the discourse however you know it just sort of it does sort of emphasize that the game does have shortcomings. I think, like, if the game was pl- perfect and flawless, they wouldn't be able to make all this clickbait because they'd alienate their audience because everyone would be loving it, you know? So I do think there is genuine issues with Starfield, and I outlined them in my review, and I think, like, some of the, some aspects of the engine and the, their, their method for delivering cinematic stories is dated, and I also think Bethesda plays it too safe sometimes, you know? Like it, the the game is just, it's not very edgy, and I think a lot of people these days they want a little bit more bite with their adult games. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of the discourse is in bad faith, and if you if you enjoy it, that's all that matters. Yeah, it's all that matters. Um, Don't worry about the, what somebody else says about way. it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Omens, happy birthday, Jazz, and congrats to your dream coming true. World of Warcraft can finally rise again. Since Ubisoft Plus streaming will presumably be on PlayStation, theoretically, every Activision Blizzard game for the next 15, 15 years will be playable on PlayStation via Ubisoft Plus streaming. That said, do you think there's a world where Microsoft doesn't release a PS5 native game and it truly is only playable on Ubisoft Plus streaming? Uh, hmm. That's an interesting question. I think... I think probably not. I think every game that they do, for st- every game they do will be sort of eligible for streaming by Ubisoft's distribution model, and I think that is part of the deal. I think like it's that's an interesting one. I wonder if that's a loophole there where they're just like, well, we don't have a PlayStation version, but then again, it's kind of like can Sony potentially run the PC version with controller support through their system? Like I don't know. But then they, just they could make a PlayStation line. a PlayStation version for Ubisoft to run, but then not actually sell that PlayStation native version. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'd have to know more about how PlayStation's cloud operates, um, because this is—it's not like there's anything proprietary in the PlayStation Five. It's just Linux at the end of the mm. day. So. Yeah, yeah, it's that's a complicated one. Interesting. I'll try yeah. and find out more about that. But we'll find out for ourselves in the future anyway. Yeah. Uh Trickster for Trey, happy birthday, Jazz. It is finished. Finally, one question is a streaming deal worldwide or just the UK? If it's worldwide, kind of stuck st- suck one country made a decision for the rest of the world. It is worldwide. It is worldwide. And that is because the UK is actually secretly in control of the whole world. <laughs> yeah. Um the, no wonder the... the whole world's gone to shit. <laughs> wow, that's not very nice. I mean, um, but hey, there is that conspiracy theory that the queen actually isn't dead, and actually some kind of cyborg being kept in a tube, powering the Illuminati or some shit. I don't know. But nah, yeah, I, I mean, the UK's still got clout. You know, of course. It's still one of the world's biggest economies, and I suppose that means something at the end of the day yeah it, um, so it is worldwide except maybe in the areas where the eu deal takes precedence i think i want to say I not, i'm not 100 percent on that uh we have it's quite small but smells like a big one great show as always guys can we get that killer instinct too so we can have the doom slayer take on diablo now happy birthday jazz i hope so because diablo do, does need to come back billy the brewer what does the big one smell like i don't know apparently it's quite small though <laughs> But it smells like a big one. 
So I don't know. <laughs> Uh, Billy <laughs> says, Jazz, you're, you're older. You have 365 days to achieve a goal before you're even older. What do you do? Be Persona 5. Uh, I want to lose 100 pounds. There you go. Lose 100 pounds. That's a good goal. But I, year. I want to want to lose 100 pounds. Mm, you want to want. Okay. Yeah. Because I, I also, I'm also not motivated to lose weight right now. I'm back, I'm back on the weight loss train. I kind of lost my, uh, when everything went crazy here with my grandpa dying and my Shakespeare dying and, uh, bunch of stuff went nuts here i kind of lost my focus but i got my focus yeah. back so i'm back on it that's awesome uh i wish i could get back on it saucy mods happy birthday jez if you guys had to choose your top three favorite consoles of all time what would they be i think i'd have to go with the 360s number one nintendo 64 number two and game boys number three this is all based off what i had the most fun with growing up cheers guys mine would be the 360 number one easy PS2 number two, easy. Probably like the Genesis maybe is number three. Probably. Mm. It's PC count. Xbox Series X and S maybe by the end would would be in the number three, but one and two is firmly Xbox 360 PS2. If PC counts, I think just windows is my favorite gaming oh, okay. device of fine, all time. fine um but if it doesn't count i actually i'm gonna say xbox one and i know that's oh, gonna be really controversial that is very controversial yeah but this was kind of like i didn't play that much 360 to be honest i was very much in obsessed with world of warcraft at the time and i played all the major games of course i did you know dragon age mass effect all that kind of stuff but it wasn't my first it wasn't my first love, really. So Xbox One was when I really, really got into Xbox and played so many service games with friends. Battlefield, God, played so much Battlefield, played so much Monster Hunter, like a thousand hours, all this kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, Xbox One for me. And I, was also, I also really liked the vision, the excitement, the connect, mm. you know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm in minority opinion there. You definitely it was just are. so badass. Definitely getting are. home from work. It, it was just cool, man. Getting home from work and just turning everything on with your voice. And this is before Alexa and all that kind of shit. It was super cool, man. Um, but yeah, I'll also, be, uh, besides that, Sega Genesis. I had so many Genesis games. I was a Sega kid. Gunstar Heroes, Dynamite Heady, Sonic, of course. I did. I did have a lot. I did have Super Nintendo as well, but it was all about Sonic, man. I was a Super Sonic kid back in the day. And we have a uh, Don um, Taku. Yes. Who's going to be the dark horse of Activision? Who has a post High Fire Rush Tango game works like Glow Up Perception Change? Toys for Bob. It would have. It would have to be one of the studios stuck on COD, like a Beanox or High Moon Studios or something. I think it's Toys for Bob, baby. All right. I mean, I. I, I I'll be fine with that. I would want it to be like High Moon Studios or Raven, but I think Raven's going to be stuck doing Warzone and stuff, so mm. probably not that. Uh, we do have a couple of super, more Super Chats uh, came in while we're doing it. So we have, uh, let's see, we have Sam Stern, Activision Spider-Man games on Xbox One. I mean, we'll see if they get the license. We might find out next week. The Don CG, interesting? CJG, nearly 10 years ago, the Xbox One launched. Here we are. Here we are now with Xbox Game Studios, but that's an ABK. How, here, how times have changed. Here's to another 10 years. It is wild. It is absolutely wild. DB Cooper says, happy birthday, Jez. Thank you. Nintendo Don the Otaku says, make sure you refresh Patreon last minute again. I, I did. I see it. We read it. Uh, Nady Nate, if, if I'm Xbox, first thing I'm doing is putting Master Chief and Call of Duty as a bundle. People playing COD with Chief on PlayStation, keep it equal parity. I mean, they just added Chief to um, to uh, to what? what, what a Siege. They added him Siege. He's like a skin. Wait, really? Yeah, I he's didn't in know Siege that. now. Yeah, there's like a whole trailer. He's in Siege now. So, I mean, yeah, you th there's a lot of crossover they could do for COD. There's a lot of skins. Like you could do Doom Slayer. You could do, you know, uh, like uh, the Dishonored characters, the Deathloop characters. Like you could you can mine the Xbox stuff, you know, like there's a lot of cross stuff they could really milk, uh, for sure. Not only in COD for skins, but also in like future team up games. Like we always mention Xbox should do a, a beat 'em up team up game or 
you know, perhaps like a, a, a cart game. I mean, you have the, the breadth of IP at this point that those type of experiences could be possible, you know? But, yeah. um, yeah, we're, we are, we are come to the end of the show. It's been four hours of Xbox talk, <laughs> positive Xbox four talk, but you know, you know, it's a little, little Jess has a little, you know, you know, so, um, yeah, I, I want to thank Cold Eastwood for stopping by for a little bit, uh, and special Nick as well. He barged his way in, you know, like he normally does his ego to, sa- to satiate himself. He wanted to be on the show. And I mean, it's happy birthday to Jez. You're a year older. Uh, I wouldn't want to do the show with anybody else. Uh, you're one of my, you're my best friends, bro. And, uh, I love you. I love doing the show with you. Uh, you know, if, if I don't know, I don't know without Aww. you, I, I don't know if I'd be doing the show with anybody else. Um, Aww, so happy birthday. I hope you have a, you. a great, well, it's almost over for you cause it's super late. So that's what, yeah, it's over for me now. It's one in the morning. Yeah. 37 years old. 37 years old. And we got another, we've been doing Xbox two for six and a half years. We've got another six and a half years in us. You know, there's yep, always something definitely. to talk about with the Xbox and the things they're doing. And, and there will be for the next decade as well. No, I would think. Yeah. Um, Patreon peeps. Thank you guys for all your support. I uh, hope you enjoyed the John Lineman show. We have Mr. Maddie plays coming on on Tuesday. So yep. that should be a lot and, of fun. Um, if you are if you are not part of the Patreon, the John Lindemann show will go to the public on Tuesday as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, that'll be up on audio and everything in Jez's Jez's channel. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I'm looking forward to talking with Maddie because there's a lot to talk about, and who knows, maybe the Xbox will drop some stuff next week. Yeah. And uh, yeah, shout out to the Patreon or shout out to our sponsors, Valari. Uh, links in the description Valari. to check out their their gaming pillow. Thank you to them for sponsoring Dropping this episode. Too. And yeah, that's another episode of Xbox Two Down. I think it was episode 287, getting close to 300. And uh, we couldn't do this without you guys in the chat. Um, Yeah, you're all awesome. Thank you, Xbox Two community. We love you. And we will be back next week for another Xbox Two. Until then, hope you guys enjoy the rest of the day and have a great weekend. Keep it gaming, guys. Take care, party people. Later.